welcome to another episode of The Grind Bit. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Hughes. I'm Bobby Trippett. And today we're going to be talking about 1985's Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. Is the jungle giving you delusions of manhood, Johnny boy? Hey, Bobby, I got the money. Yeah, I made the team. But you're a hooker. Get that goddamn thing out of your mouth, Chris. I don't know. Spooky got no, 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 So guys, we're here in the bin covering a genre we haven't covered yet, but is prolific when it comes to the exploitation and grindhouse genre, and that is the cannibal movie. Yum. Yeah. Cannibal light. There's a reason I picked this movie as the cannibal movie, uh, because I personally do not like Cannibal Holocaust or Cannibal Faroe. I don't think they're good movies at all, uh, and I don't really find any enjoyment in them. It's really, they're not fun. Hughes? You, you a fan of cannibal movies? Nope, not at all. All right. So we have to cover it at some point because it's a prolific genre when it comes, well, subgenre when it comes to these type of movies. Uh, and Massacre in Dinosaur Valley is one I've always told myself in the back of my mind, keep that one for the cannibal week. Because you know what's great about this one? We don't have to watch a turtle get murdered. <laughs> Yeah. We don't have to watch a wombat die. (laughs) There are a few other ones that I'm fans of. Like, there's a really weird one called... It's called all sorts of different things, but the one I have the copy is called Amazonia or Amazona, which is about a woman who gets kidnapped by cannibals but then becomes one of them. And and then it becomes a very weird um, giallo movie. How does a cannibal movie turn into a giallo film? Yeah, well, maybe you'll find out one day on the grind bin. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Six months from now. <laughs> yeah. We'll fire that one up, dig it out of the bin, and fire it up. Make Hughes watch it first. So, <laughs> <laughs> For this movie, a little bit of background in it. Now, you're going to wonder when we start describing this, how the hell is this a cannibal movie? Well, you're going to find out why we selected it for this uh, because of the marketing for this movie. So let's get into the background. It was filmed in Brazil by an... Italian production crew and director. It was released in 1985. It's mostly known by this title, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, but in the UK, a distribution company bought it and it was renamed Cannibal Faroe 2 to sell more copies. They go hand in hand. It has nothing to do with the first Cannibal Faroe, uh, and the distribution company knew that damn well, but they wanted to sell movies, so they just said, eh, slap a two on it and uh, call it a day. You know, that happens all the time. You know, uh, what was it? Uh, if you look in, I believe, Italy, there's a series called La Casa, which is uh, the Evil Dead movies and a couple unrelated movies. <laughs> the house? Just like you get to like La Casa 5, <laughs> and it's, I don't even know which one it is. Oh, God, can you imagine if they mixed up that series with the house movies and Evil Dead? Oh, boy, you're in for a... Honestly, I could have used uh, Bruce Campbell with a chainsaw running in there when we watched House 2. That could have brightened up House 2. Especially if we got Mar first. Yeah, the little mini mini Bruce's running around. (laughs) So you think, like, there's some sort of uh, British Mr. Crown. Well, buy it. Buy it and call it Pharaoh 2. (laughs) But I guess it worked because they ended up selling copies of it. Uh, you can find some people online that have reviewed it from the UK that said this is called Cannibal for O2 where I live. It was a hell. It was hell trying to find this IMDb page. <laughs> and know? as we've seen too, there's there's trailers cut for that market that make this seem way more brutal of a film than it actually is. Yeah, the trailer that we're probably going to drop in here as long as there's enough dialogue and not i think it's actually mostly just ah, like the whole time is people just screaming is all violence and when i showed you guys the trailer i'm like this is not the this is not the movie at all right you were saying that this is nothing you to insisted to us but we were we were looking at each other like i don't know if i want to do this movie. <laughs> there's i don't even know how many actual scenes of gore in this movie maybe two yeah it's almost two. nothing but the trailer is all of that so every violence that's in the whole movie is cut into a two-minute long trailer. So it's a, Like, it's I think real... Bronx Warriors was a gorier film. Oh, for sure. This is not a gory movie at all. For except all that, for this like is a maybe, jungle cannibal movie. Yeah, there's maybe five minutes where it becomes a cannibal movie. Yeah, Green so. Inferno, it's not. No, thank God. In that this is enjoyable. <laughs> Okay, so we're getting into the crew here. No relation, but the director of this movie, it's pronounced Michele, 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 Michele Massimo Tarantini. No relation, uh, no relation to Tarantino. Uh, his name is just Tarantini. As those are different names. Yeah. <laughs> 
uh, just, you know, replace the I with an O, uh, used as a pseudonym for this movie, Michael E. Lemick. Uh, he's the director of this movie. I he's love when also... that happens when Italian directors have to use a uh, more American-sounding pseudonym. It's just, just like when as Lucio bad. Fulci released uh, the Beyond as Seven Doors of Death under the name Louis Fuller. But it's like, who cares? Who sits there and reads the director? And goes, well, I can't read this. I'm out of here. Yeah, some guy is looking at the poster, like looking at the fine print, going, "Fucking Italian." <laughs> Here they go. They thought they got us in World War II. They're coming in here with their movies now. Fuck them. I'm not watching it. We hung Mussolini once. We need to do it again. <laughs> oh my god so uh th- he's also the screenwriter you're italian how do you do this <laughs> how do i well i don't care duke mitchell weeps <laughs> yeah he's gonna get a loaf of bread in the mail yeah <laughs> probably uh, i'm waiting he's, he's, he'll appreciate it so he's also the screenwriter for this movie uh screenwriting i don't know what because uh there's nobody actually speaking any sort of dialogue that's uh not dubbed so i don't know I really don't know who actually came up with the final product or if these people were saying anything close to what we hear because the dialogue in this movie is that of Raw Force. It is this off is a, the wall. This is done in the classic Marvel style that Stan Lee used to do back in the day where it's like we drew, we put in all the images and then I'm just going to fill in the speech bubbles later. <laughs> yeah, because de- like he watches the movie and goes, well, this is what they're probably talking about and starts re- typing. Reaction shots don't really match what people are saying. No. And then there's parts where characters are saying things where it's like, oh, I, I would think somebody would be much more upset at that but uh no uh this is a real conundrum this movie i would like to know what they actually meant but uh we'll never find out no there's not even like screams for the pain of stuff going on it just kind of happens it's on the screen. violence is happening to the tough ass people yeah man. they know how to take it like do you think that uh the main character is actually a bad guy like because there's parts where he just doesn't care about anybody and oh, well, like do you there's think- a significant part at the end of this movie that i have an issue <laughs> do with you think, like, i don't at all i love it like uh the supposed love interest was just an actual like a victim like a rape victim and they were just like oh no they're in love he's not forcing that lip on her oh god so the, he, save it for the movie, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So hey, he's going. About, he's going for ten points, right? Yeah, he's going ten. No, he's getting that cool hundred. <laughs> he's he's had enough cool looks. He's all right. Well, let me tell you about the writer and director. He was born in Italy in 1942. He has 31 credits, and it's a real mixed bag of Italian trash. Some of these movies, by the way, have <laughs> some of the most amazing titles to them. Uh, he started directing cheap Italian films in 1973. The first of which I cannot pronounce. Uh, but his sec- second movie was something in 1975 called The Teasers. Now, there's going to be a theme in the movies he directs, and you're going to see how that translates to Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, uh, and you'll see where a lot of the inspiration for this movie uh, came from. The Teasers, uh, Lordana is a schoolgirl who takes advantage of her fellow students and teachers by using her innocent schoolgirl beauty. After she loses her virginity to an older man, she soon realizes there are more important things to life than teasing men. Hmm. So it's a real uh, a real lesson learned, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he made four more movies just like this. Same premise within the next few years. Basically, an attractive girl or woman seduces men to get ahead, such as 1977's Taxi Girl. Marcella inherits a taxi business from her father and now sets out on the job of her life. With each new fare, she becomes involved with sex and crime, all done up in 70s Italian comedy style. It's a better than uh, manhandlers. <laughs> yeah, it's like a manhandlers in a car, you know? Uh, it's a mobile rub tug, if you will. Uh, 1979, now this is the greatest name for a movie he's directed, A Police Woman on the Porno Squad. (laughs) That's the actual name of the movie in English, uh, which is actually a sequel to a movie he made in 1975 uh, called uh, something I can't pronounce. uh, Police Woman on the Death Squad? Yeah. (laughs) uh, The Adventures of Gianna, a sexy police woman who wants to help a child in the search for his mother who ends up in trouble. She has become a prostitute and is kept prisoner. Gianna will succeed and be honored for her, quote, skills shown in duty. Oh, quote, skills. It says, quote, skills shown dot, dot, dot in duty. Uh, This movie also had a sequel in 1981 called uh, A Police Woman in New York. So she brought the she brought the prostitute game to New York, I'm guessing. And uh, sexed it up there. Is there a box set of these? Uh, <laughs> How dare you talk about her box? <laughs> Is that supposed to be an innuendo? <laughs> you serve a box lunch? Yeah, box set, huh? Who's the one with the dirty jokes now, Bobby? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real sc- ever since he's seen screwballs too he's coming in here now with all the box jokes so, and- suddenly it gets blue after screwballs <laughs> uh yeah if we have any listeners left you know <laughs> uh 1980 oh my god this movie as i as i see it's pronounced as gay salami <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't think it's that same salami, Mike. Uh, uh, well, in Rome's notorious gay club, the Alibi, men date, love, and quarrel. Meanwhile, on stage, the classic drama of salami is played out, but with surprising variations. In the end, a clown goes out through the city streets saying a monologue that explains it all, while satirizing the bourgeoisie. That's got to be the <laughs> oh most my. confusing. He explains the movie. Like a clown walks into frame and goes, so here's what the fuck you've been watching. <laughs> so people people write their own synopsis for the IMDb movies, you know, until basically somebody writes a better one. So that's some guy, he's watching it, and then he goes, yeah, and then I guess halfway through, a clown goes out and starts giving a speech. So, <laughs> And then the last one I have, the last credit uh, I wrote down was 1984, Women in Fury, which we'll get back to. Uh, his last credit, though, was in 2009 for a TV movie called The African Game. Written under his uh, alias. Yeah, I think most of his stuff was alias Yeah, for some reason. Even some of his Italian movies, which like, this was an Italian movie, so I don't know why the alias was used. But uh, apparently even over in Italy, it would, be, uh, it would be offensive to use the name Tarantini <laughs> on a poster. So <laughs> uh, We get to the cast. Michael Sop... Okay, I'm sorry. Michael Sopkew. There it is. That's his name. That's how you pronounce it. It's not spelled like that. He plays All-American Kevin Hall. Yes. It's a real John claude Van Damme type scenario where we have, uh, <laughs> we have a guy playing the All-American, you know? The old Indiana Jones. I call him Indiana throughout this whole... Uh, all my notes. Indiana Sopkew. Yeah. So uh, he only has five credits, actually, which is... I When I first went to his IMDb page, I was like, that is shocking that he only has five credits because even though he can't act, he has quite the screen presence. And he just keeps on making babies with all these ladies. Oh, they can't stay. You know, I write in my notes at some point, it's like, he takes his shirt off because it's like, well, we've had enough for the men. Now a little bit for the ladies. <laughs> or the men, the other men <laughs> in the audience because uh, they just couldn't wait to get his shirt off. It was more of a tease to get Michael's shirt off than it was the women. Oh, there was no know. teasing the women. To get <laughs> no, their no, no. The off. women, they're naked immediately, but they're like, you're going to have to wait, ladies, but it will come off. His first movie, 1983, 2019, After the Fall of New York. Then he was in a movie in 1984 called Blast Fighter, uh, which apparently this movie borrowed music from, and I've confirmed that, uh, because I have tracked down a copy of Blast Fighter, and uh, yeah, that'll be on the bin. Trust me. Yeah. His character's name in Blast Fighter is Tiger. Yeah. And I would basically say it's it's Italian Rambo. It's the it's basically the premise of Rambo, but give him... Like, it's like if you mix Rambo 1 with 2, and you know how, like, Rambo has that uh, random Vietnamese woman that follows him around? Yeah. yeah. Well, in Blast Fighter, he has a random woman that follows him around, and some of the dialogue uh, is even better in this movie in terms of bizarre... Um, I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> I wonder if it's dubbed by... Like, it must have been written by the same people because it's very, very similar. Uh, 1984, a movie called Devilfish, and then <laughs> uh, this movie, and then he was in nothing until 2014, a movie called Bad Dog and Superhero, which he just makes a very small cameo in. So really only four movies did he star in. And then he quit acting... Uh, yeah, he quit acting and then went on to study medicinal plant science and ultimately launched his own company that imports and distributes special glass bottles designed to protect the contents from the sun. Yeah, so he's doing good work. And uh, by the way, he does that in Los Angeles, so Michael, I'll be knocking. You're definitely going to get a visit from the old bin. Yeah, don't worry, that's not a man serving you with papers. No, he's brought a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> So the next person I have written down is Suzanne Carvalho, who plays Eva Ibanez. Uh, she's from Brazil. Her mother, Leah Farrell, is also an actress in various B-movies from Brazil. However, she only has five acting credits. She started her career, though, as a model at the age of two. And over the course of years, she had quite the acting career outside of movies because she was in over 250 TV commercials. Uh, she started acting on the stage uh, when she was a teenager, then went into TV and eventually into a few movies. She was also on the cover of October 1982's edition of Brazilian Playboy. Nice. Uh, in 1979, she was in a movie called Delirious Saturdays. 1984, Women in Fury by the same director. And 1985, wow. Dinosaur Valley was her last movie. And you'll see that's a running theme for most of these people. <laughs> Michael, Dinosaur Valley, last movie. Suzanne, Dinosaur Valley, last movie. We'll see how many more people in the cast that this was their last movie. Like, they were like, you know what? I'm, I'm fucking done with, with Everyone movies. Everyone collectively decided. They all got together, had a meeting, and went, let's all pursue other other, <laughs> other possible ventures. Do like, we know uh, how long they were in the jungle filming this? Long enough. Long enough to quit. 
<laughs> they were just like, nope, never again. Uh, in 1989, she quit showbiz altogether to become now Hughes. What of all the professions? What do you think she quit to become? A waitress. No, she became a professional race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And in, in 1992, she won two championships for kart racing. Making her the only woman to win a Formula 3 championship. In both a Brazilian championship and South America. So the whole continent, apparently, she won a, She won an award for. And apparently race car driving is a hobby that she still maintains while she works for Guinness Book. So, quite the career. I'm sure she looks back fondly on those days in the Amazon jungle filming... With her tits out. <laughs> Going all like... All time... <laughs> like, she spends all this time naked in the jungle being filmed by people and just thinking, man, if I could just get in the fastest car I could find, <laughs> I'd get the fuck out of here. Uh, the next person I have written down is Milton Rodriguez, who plays Captain John Hines. No, all the, <laughs> all the names are the most American names, and I love it. Captain John Hines Ketchup. You Captain know. Eagle Cheeseburger. <laughs> Uh, another Brazilian board actor. He has 63 IMDb credits, all for movies you cannot pronounce and you've never heard of. Uh, the last person I have written down is Marta Anderson, who plays Betty Hines, who is uh, my personal favorite character in this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that the, cracked out uh, Marilyn Monroe? Yeah. Yeah, the ball-busting wife, which um, we all know what, what term Mr. Crown would use for her husband. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she was a Brazilian-born act. She's a Brazilian-born actress. Okay, so another one from Brazil. She was a model. She'd won over 10 beauty contests in the 1960s, and she moved to Rio de Janeiro where she married a TV producer, got divorced, married a Brazilian businessman, and then got divorced again and had one child out of the whole thing. His name was Albert, and now he's a lawyer in Brazil. Uh, she went on to star in soap operas and various low-budget films. In 1977, she was supposed to die from cancer in 60 days, but she miraculously survived, and she became a religious figure as a result. Huh. She wrote a book about it called The Woman Who Defied God. Whoa. That was before this movie, by the way. You know, watching this movie, I believe that she would defy God. <laughs> Could you imagine her religious followers going to see this movie and being like, oh, I can't wait to go see her latest outing. Oh, this is interesting. She's just cucking that man the whole movie. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, she has since quit acting and has become a producer for theatrical events in Brazil that are focused on religious and humanitarian causes. So I don't think they're doing the Brazilian stage version of Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, but uh, I've never Yet. been to Brazil. So uh, Her real name is actually Sonia Marta, Marta Anders. And I say that, and you might wonder, well, why did I mention that she had a son? Well, I got all this information from a bio written on IMDb by a man named Albert Anders, a.k.a. her son. <laughs> <laughs> she has 25 credits on IMDb. Most are Brazilian movies I cannot pronounce the names of, and I will not try. Uh, 1980, Bear Behind Bars. All right. 1981, The Empire of Desire. Now, this is the last uh, description for a movie I have written down, and this is probably one of the most oddest movies I've ever heard. Sandra is a rich widow who wants to know the beach house who want well this is written by somebody so wants to own the beach house of her late husband that he's left her she goes there with her lover an unscrupulous young man whose studies she's supporting helping her with the red tape is dr carvalho a very conservative and old-fashioned lawyer on her way to the house she meets a couple of hippies looking for a place to stay she hires them as temporary housekeepers living nearby is a crazy prophet who shows his genitals to anybody who comes close <laughs> during, during their stay in the house, all these characters clash in unusual and funny ways, including some disgusting tourists, three young women on vacation, the police, prostitutes, a reporter for a communist magazine, and many others. What the fuck is going on there? So if you're religious, you can flash your balls at people. Yeah, I believe that's that's in the Bible somewhere. So what is this, some sort of like Brazilian house party? Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I'm reading this going like, is there a plot? It's a two-hour like, sitcom. Yeah, with a guy showing his dick to you every few minutes, you know. If somebody comes close enough, do you think there's like, like somebody's like, no, 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 stay five feet away or else it's coming out again. They made a salt circle on the floor. <laughs> do not breach this circle or things are going to get salty. Uh, two last pieces of trivia before we get into the movie. Most of the native cannibals in this movie were actually played by Brazilian military men on shore leave. Um, and the Weird way to spend your time off. <laughs> the actor uh, Samuka, who played, who played the native chief, uh, he actually did eat a raw pig heart when he eats a heart in this movie. So uh, 
for the love of the craft, you know. And dedication. <laughs> yeah, Spielberg didn't even make that Kali Ma do, guy do that, I bet. So. Was it, yeah, it was just Jello. And there's the difference in quality. Uh, and this very bizarre uh, world music is the only way I can it's describe it. Very upbeat. I thought it was Jamaican to start with. There's I thought a, it was a lot African. Of in this movie. I thought this yeah. was like African. Cool. It sounded like African world music to me. So I thought it was like Jamaican. the beginning of uh, Cool Runnings. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see that actually. <laughs> it's like children almost going la 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 yeah. la la la. Uh, and this movie will come up various times in the movies. Uh, sometimes in appropriate parts, sometimes in non-appropriate parts. Uh, but now we just see this very weird music playing underneath us as a bus drives up. Uh, it's going on this, this dirt weird road school bus. I feel like we're watching Ernest goes to Brazil. <laughs> Well, there was Ernest Goes to Africa, right? Uh, which I've never seen, but I'm assuming at some point he does. Uh, there's some face paint involved, but I could I be wrong. I assume it's very similar to Shaft in Africa. <laughs> what, he just walks around and he's like, eh, yeah. Oh, Shaft in Africa is great. And, you know, I've never seen Shaft in Africa. <laughs> it's, the, it's the least seen of him. At one point, someone asks if he rides um, either horses or camels. And he responds by saying, like, no, nah, man, I ride ass. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to this bus, right? And we see that there's like, so there's a lot of people sleeping on the bus. Some lady's holding a giant duck. <laughs> like a giant duck. Like that is a heavily featured lady with a duck. <laughs> that doesn't go anywhere. It would have made more sense if she was holding a giant cock. And like, I, by cock, I mean rooster. Because that will come into play very soon. Uh, I assume there's a scene where the duck gets in on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then we see there's two white people on the bus. Uh, they are clearly tourists, is that what I say. And there's an, one of them's like an old man fanning himself with his hat. And then a lady dressed in a skirt. And like then we cut to like this guy in the back kind of creeping on her. And she's just giving him this death stare back. Like a real, real, like, yeah, you try it, motherfucker. See, it's a, it's a way of showing that, like, even in other countries, riding the bus is exactly... Exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go down to Brazil, it's still the same creeps on the bus. Same fucking know? guy doing the same <laughs> creepy shit. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> if only the buses in America <laughs> pumped that music through, maybe people would be a little bit happier, you know? <laughs> uh, so the, the bus pulls up to this town, and all all these like children run up to it. it it's, it's interesting if you look through this crowd, too, because you got a mix of impoverished South American children, yeah. and then like two or three white kids who look like they're on summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> like you have basically like a unicef commercial run up to you uh and they're all i guess they're all asking for money yeah they that's they make reference to it later like does white, white people have money in this country yeah they're all waiting for the white people so like the other people come off they're like no 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 oh there we go tourists and they're trying to get money out of them uh but some some guy comes out he's like no 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 children and this guy that we'll never see again comes out and introduces us to all the main characters that are on this bus. And he's like, oh, this is the professor. He's here for so-and-so. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This he, is Marianne. <laughs> he's the host of this movie. So he says something about, like, this, oh, this guy's a professor, and he's here to, like, solve some sort of problem for them? By the yeah. way, this will never no, get this, followed yeah, up on. I didn't, I didn't okay. write it down because it didn't matter. Neither did I. <laughs> but this is the thing. is like we think, okay, so the movie is going to be about this professor solving a problem for this town because we've clearly spent two minutes explaining this. Nope. Forget you ever heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it was just like they're dubbing this movie and he's like, well, we got, I mean, we got to fill it in with something because at this point, this guy's rambling off words and I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like he, took well, a, he took a writing class and they were telling him like, look, every character is the star of their own movie. So. Yeah. You know, by the way, this movie is the most eclectic group of people and they're all stars of their own movie. Yeah. And we're, we're going to get into it. This is not just one movie. This is three movies in one. This is like amazing how much they've crammed into one movie. What value? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. Tr- they could have marketed <laughs> it as like, come see our triple feature. It's done in an hour and 20 minutes. Like you get three movies in one. First, you get a uh, South American adventure movie. Then you get a cannibal movie. And then uh, we don't really know what. We're going to turn it into some sort of white slaver ring. Like it's... <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so where we start is we learn that this professor's here with this lady. We don't know who she is yet, but we'll soon find out, and it becomes much more disturbing yeah. once we do. I liked it better before we knew. Now we go into another uh, main character in this movie who will disappear in 15 minutes. To go be in another movie. <laughs> the hotel manager who bugs me to no fucking end. I can't <laughs> stand this fucking guy. And he comes in. So the doctor, like the professor and, and this girl come in. And he's like, oh, hello, professor. Welcome to my modest hotel. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and he's like going on and on and on. And the professor's like, well, you were able to get us two rooms, right? And he's like, oh, no, I had to give up your other room because some Americans came into town last night and I had to give them give your room away so they they wouldn't have to uh, sleep on the street and, and I'm just like fuck you dude I booked two rooms like what the hell's wrong with you like you just tell them no vacancy it's like oh we have nowhere else to go it's like well go find another hotel I mean I don't have any room Americans have money though <laughs> well I guess yeah la, but la, this la, was la, all la, done la. this was all done through <laughs> letters like he sent letters hey I need these hotel <laughs> rooms <laughs> Never got confirmation. Like, yeah. hey, you got my letter, right? Back when Travelocity was a series of letters you have to write. Like, you just hope. You're like, all right, well, we're going to this this shithole town in the middle of nowhere, okay? We hope better that, hope uh, they got a fucking post office. Well, did you hear how much gotta hope was, your messenger duck got there. Did you hear how much was in that letter? It was like, okay, I need the hotel room for this, and I need this many hotel rooms, and I need flight for passage for this many people, and we're going to be doing this. and all. I'm like, I can't get people to read all of my email. Like, one email... <laughs> This guy sends one letter and heads to the, the jungle <laughs> yeah. and hopes for the best. It's like a race. Who can get there first, him or the letter? Da -da 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 -da. You got my letter, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, a phone call would suffice. Like, just no pick phones. up the phone. There is a phone because there's a part where the a pilot's talking on the phone. Very soon, by the way. But I hate this fucking hotel manager, and we'll keep getting into why he's the worst fucking character and why he's utterly useless when he could serve a real purpose in this movie. But fuck him. <laughs> um, then, okay, so basically he's like, yeah, I gave away your room to some other guys. Um, and then he, like, sort of half whispers to the professor, and he's like, I moved another bed into your room so that the young lady could room with you. Yeah. And she hears this, so the lady hears this, right? So this hotel manager is already cementing himself as a real pervert, and you might want to check for cameras in these rooms or make sure that the doors lock. They don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't even shut. The doors don't shut in this house. No, no. So then <laughs> the girl leans in, and she says, I'm fine with it. He's my father. In this, like, very, as I wrote, very, very sexual way. Yeah, she, she does it in a tone as if to be like, and you're still not wrong. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, is it supposed and to... And a shudder came over all of us. I mean, this is like, is it really his daughter, or is this like a, I'll call you daddy type this is, situation? This is part of the game. <laughs> because... There's also parts, uh, we'll get to it, but I have some theories about these two. And then, okay, so then this photographer and two models show up in the lobby. Hey, here come like, the girls. <laughs> yeah, here come the girls. Uh, and they're like, hey, is our car ready? Uh, and then we learn, okay, so this is where the hotel manager pisses me off again, is these people walk past, and then he gets into the professor's ear, and he says, uh, within earshot of everyone, by the way, because he doesn't whisper, at least not in the dubbing. <laughs> He's a photographer from Sao Paulo, and the two girls are models. They came down here on a photo assignment. He says he worked for a fashion magazine. If you ask me, I'll bet it's a sex one. Thank you, manager. Yeah, thank you, Don Knotts. You can fuck off now and yeah. go back to your goddamn apartment. Can I like, please get my fucking key? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? And then, okay, so then a truck pulls up outside. And I just want to say, now, this is the first introduction of our supposed protagonist of this movie, our hero, Kevin Hall, all-American Kevin Hall. Indiana. <laughs> Eagle cheeseburger. <laughs> He's lying in the back of a truck eating bananas, and they pull up to the hotel, and the driver calls him a gringo and says they're there, and then... He also gives him shit for eating the bananas. Yeah, because, okay, so Kevin stands up, he says, quote, what a lousy trip and worse food, here, and then hands him a bunch of bananas he's eaten, and the driver goes, that wasn't part of the ride, and then he says, Kevin says, quote, sorry, sorry, I tried, I tried to pay, the waiter couldn't change my $100 bill. And I'm just like, okay, fuck you, dude. Our hero, like, no. ladies and gentlemen. But, but then the next line of the kids on the street are like, oh, that Amer a white American that's broke? How does that happen? <laughs> that's, you know, uh, Kevin Hall. 
Uh, and once we find out his profession, we'll find out that, uh, yeah, he should be broke. Because uh, I, uh, when they <laughs> actually describe what he does, I'm like, no, that's not, that's not how, you, how you say that. <laughs> uh, we go to basically okay after basically kevin insults everybody uh including the driver he's like can you also unload my bag so like after he's already like eating this guy's food he says fuck you i'm not paying for it unless you got changed for a hundred dollar bill hey <laughs> can you get my bags jackass and then the guy pulls it down right well no i'm sorry the driver at first says for five dollars you sure want a lot and that's what i just wrote fuck you our hero everybody yeah. our hero kevin hall <laughs> He represents all Americans that go down he to Brazil. really does. <laughs> they just, in the 80s, you just wave $5 around. You go, somebody bring me a cocktail, you fucks. And, like, and that lets you be a total prick for the rest <laughs> of the day. Yeah, you're a millionaire in Mexico, 1980, <laughs> five bucks. Yeah, the Americans just walk around with $5, just grabbing bananas from people, like running out of a kid's hand and just eating it and going like, hey, hey, I'm American, I'll do what I want. Yeah, I remember, literally, I remember one of my father's friends once saying to me that Mexico's awesome because you go into the bars and the strip clubs and quote you give them five dollars and they'll take care of you bubba <laughs> i was like nine <laughs> and you're like hmm, this yeah, is advice so I'll, this is advice yeah. i'll always remember it stood with me i was like what do you mean by take care of me like <laughs> <laughs> did you ever test that theory <laughs> no <laughs> son i'll tell you all you gotta do is tape a five dollar bill to your belt and they'll take care of you son <laughs> Take care of you. I was too baffled by the fact that he knew I went by Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> you just run a little five dollar bill with fishing line. <laughs> Keep snatching see what it you back catch. out. Yeah, see what you catch. You know. <laughs> by the way, the line goes through the zipper. So you just Then we see. Okay, he pulls down this giant wooden box right and of course the driver's like fuck you i don't care about you and he just pulls it out of the truck and kevin's like oh don't ruin all my stuff and then all of these like dinosaur bones just fall out into the street <laughs> so apparently he like i don't i don't know what he does with them but apparently he collects fossils yeah he smuggles fossils into america by the way We'll never see him from again. From Brazil. From Brazil. Yeah, we'll never see any of these again. No. Like, this is a whole... He just, like, leaves them there. No, he sent it on the boat. What? Yeah, he sent those on a boat. He's like, I'll I send my stuff on the boat. Another, like... Uh, I'm going to take the plane. This is another letter-writing scenario. Look, I'm going to write a letter. Can you deliver this at... <laughs> Some certain time, some certain date. Some guy's going to pick it up. It's all going to work out. Smuggling them bones. <laughs> so, don't worry about any. See, what we're telling you, in 10 minutes, none of <laughs> none this of is going to matter. You, fellas, you're, you're telling me this guy is literally a bone smuggler? <laughs> He's a bone smuggler. <laughs> you know what? That's almost, almost what they will call him when yeah. we get to his actual profession. It's true. So at this point, he's a bone smuggler. <laughs> And so then we go to the hotel, and then Kevin wakes up that fucking hotel manager, and he's like, hey, can I get a room? And the manager's like, well, I don't have any extra. And I'm like, well, fuck you, dude. You found people for once for people last night. Like, And I know we're in a different country, and things are a little different. Some things are more relaxed. Some things are. But he walked into a hotel with a fucking shotgun on his shoulder. A shotgun and a giant crate yeah. that he's dragging in, like, scuffing the hardwood. Yeah, like you know? fucking Django's dragging in the chain gun. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what country you're in. If I'm the hotel manager, I'm like, all right, hold on. I have questions. <laughs> but then he pulls out the American Express, and the hotel manager is like, oh, I guess I can make an exception. It's like, okay, so who did he kick out? What person that wrote a letter is he kicking out today? You know? Uh, then we go to the photo shoot. Okay. It was like a hard cut, wasn't it? Like, they pulled the American Express out, hard cut yeah, to, to a- these weird model with knives. Uh, this fucking photo shoot okay, so- is <laughs> troublesome. <laughs> Go ahead and explain to me what's going on on this photo shoot. All right, so we have we have these scantily clad girls, and uh, they're with, I, I guess, actors dressed as savages. Yeah, I guess cannibals. Natives. Natives. You know, it's uh, they're doing the uh, community theater production of Cannibal Holocaust. Yes. <laughs> on the front lawn of this hotel, <laughs> they're like, you know, what's really popular is that Cannibal Holocaust movie. Let's do a Playboy spread about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this it's- is. They're just going to, okay, kind of pretend you're going to eat her heart out, you know? There we go. Nice picture. All right. (laughs) This is the precursor for Girls and Corpses magazine, (laughs) which is a real thing, listeners. Do you think, uh, um, oh my God. Do you think Not real corpses. Oh, it's like a it's a it's like a horror porn mag. It's you have nude women with uh, like you know special effects bodies and shit like that. I mean, I'm sure at some point Playboy did some sort of Cannibal Holocaust theme photo shoot. I mean, why, they've probably done everything. So I'm sure you run out you run out of how many ways you can have a woman naked in a picture. You know, <laughs> we only get so many angles of a <laughs> chandelier. 
<laughs> like some guy goes sees uh, Cannibal Hawk and is like, now that's something new. Now we're talking. There we go. I saw this movie. You know, the only thing that would make the movie better would be just a lot more naked girls and none of the eating. <laughs> <laughs> and none of the rape with a rock. You know, that would, it would make it a lot more tasteful, if you know what I mean. We ran it by Heff. He loves it. That's more of a uh, penthouse deal. That's Larry Flint's department. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He Over can deal Hustler. with that rape rock. Well, well, Oz is classy. Rape rock, by the way, my least favorite kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then they, the models do this old change in front of the uh, fat guy in a car trope. Yeah, don't <laughs> promise not to look. Okay, yeah, Hurley from Lost is sitting in the car, <laughs> yeah, like, like peeking between He's his fingers, sweating all over the place. This poor guy. Uh, by the way, there are deleted scenes for this movie. Okay, which is more of this character that will never Carlito. Yeah, and one of them, I don't know where it is, but apparently the photographer gets mad at him. Hmm. I think it's when they come back. Well, I mean, they're, they, the photographer's yelling at him in, yeah, the, he came in back. the bar later. It's because he's so fat, he popped all four tires in the car when he yeah, sat they said down that. on it. Yeah, but they actually they, filmed we have that scene. scene. They, filmed it. they filmed the scene of him well, yeah, leaning that's against way the way too fucking slapstick, <laughs> even for this movie, I would the think. Scene. They filmed the scene of him like leaning against one side of the car and, and they all, all the tires flatten. popped because he's such a fatty. That's like something Johnny Bighead would do over in Surf 2. My God. Don't mention that movie. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby start the man. <laughs> okay, guys. So what do we have uh, for the entertainment at this fine establishment here in uh, what have you, Brazil? We have two cocks sparring against each other. <laughs> yep. Saturday night cock fight here at the uh, local hotel, the classy, modest hotel. And I write at this point, I go, uh, I think this is an actual cock fight. Oh, that... That wasn't CGI. Yeah, like, I don't think that this was uh, faked. Oh, you thought you were going to have a cannibal movie with that actual animal abuse? <laughs> like you said, we didn't have to watch a... A, a turtle, turtle get dismembered. Yeah, or... but we do have to watch two cocks actually fight. But fortunately, though, they, they don't show any, like, serious things. You know, it's like they start to get aggressive, and then we pull them apart. Yeah, uh, and I did, of course, say, where's Bronson? Oh, yeah, I thought that, too. <laughs> There's a cock fight without Bronson? Come on, now. And then this is the best That's part. That's another deleted of... scene, right? Yeah. This he, he's grabbing Carlito by the dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the best part about it. You think, like, okay, so we don't really see this hotel yet. We see there's a cockfight, and then we pull out to see that it's in the lobby of the hotel. Yep. <laughs> so, so on Saturday nights, they turn the lobby of the hotel into the local cockfight arena. They throw some sawdust on the floor. You know, it's, it's 50 Cent Wings. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kevin, our, our Kevin Hall, all-American hero... <laughs> <laughs> as he will be referred to throughout the episode. Uh, is sitting at the bar and manage, the manager looks over while serving food during a cockfight. He's eating his dinner and he says, pretty good fight, eh? And I'm just like, can you get out of my movies, sir? <laughs> Fuck you. What are you? I'm just glad he didn't say anything salacious. Okay. Now, I hate to say this. The next characters we're going to be introduced to, we won't refer, <laughs> refer to them as these characters throughout the movie. But as I wrote, as cuck at his wife because... Yeah. <laughs> We go from cockfighting to cuckfighting. So there's this guy uh, who's PTSD. I, that's I got, a good name for him, PTSD. <laughs> PTSD, PTSD and ugly Marilyn. Sergeant, Sergeant Cuck, PTSD, <laughs> private PTSD. So he's this guy. I don't know if at this point he's dressed up in his fatigues or not. He will be for the rest of the movie because he falls into a deep, deep uh, depression. But also gets, a, I mean, this guy is a real, like you could have had a whole movie about this guy. I could see a Rambo movie where he just gets caught in the jungle and just starts murdering people, and they're like, well, we didn't give you a mission, but Oh, yeah, he, they, they got the sweating on the phone, doing the, <laughs> yeah, I'm coming for you. <laughs> it almost would have made more sense if he ran into China later in the movie, you know. China, was, China. China, China. He was just like a tour guide, and they just started killing all the people that he was taking <laughs> on the tour. <laughs> You want to know how to survive in the jungle? I'll tell you. You know, this is like, uh, I know you guys have never seen it, but the Linda Blair movie. This is a lot like... Um, the Linda Blair movie. Like yeah, the biopic. One. The one with... Uh, <laughs> the one where she goes to the jungle. The one with Richard Lynch, Night Force, where he's stuck in a in a you know shithole of a country down in South America, as they say. This is a real Richard Lynch character. Like, he's just kind of... He's kind of been left there, quote, quote, left there by the CIA. They've stopped returning his letters. <laughs> uh, so he's there with his wife, though. And they're sitting at a table, and his wife uh, has apparently been staring at Kevin, Kevin Hall, All-American Hero, all night. And she says, quote, at least he looks like a live one, not burned out like you, Captain Hines. I should say ex-captain, my ex-lover, and ex-husband. Yeah, that's you. Man. I don't know how he's an ex-captain unless... 
he was kicked oh, out. This oh, is a this, real section this guy, eight. Yeah. Like this, this is a real. Uh, they they had to get him out of there. The, I write, the only discharge he's gotten in a while is the one from the military. <laughs> oh, because oh, oh. I write shots fucking fired, and at this point I write. So who goes on vacation with their ex wife? <laughs> like at this point I'm like, so they're they're divorced. Like, did they book the trip in advance? And like, they're all like, <laughs> we can't get a refund. Neither had the balls to cancel. You know, they're daring each other. <laughs> They're it's like, cheaper than a divorce. Who's going to cuck who, you know? You cancel first, bitch. No, you cancel, you fucker. Look, they're trying to work things out, man. They thought they thought a trip to this <laughs> cockfight hotel in Brazil would help. It worked for Bronson. <laughs> it did. Yeah, so they go on a vacation together, apparently, and uh, in the middle of a divorce. They're like, maybe we can go mend it. Let's go down to a, a random shithole. <laughs> Like a, a, I, I mean, we never really established where we are other than like, I guess, somewhere on the Amazon River. Like one of the last vestiges of civilization before you get into the unknown, you know? Uh, and apparently this is a big tourist destination where people are sending letters to come down to this hotel. They've heard it was a modest establishment, but there is cock... They, they yeah. advertise it like Raw Force, maybe with a brochure. Oh, yeah. Come come to uh, come have a nice three-night stay at the Pollo Del Rio. <laughs> you know, Bobby, I know you, you just kind of messed it up saying, but I'm sure they did say, come, come, come to, <laughs> yeah. to something Del Rio. Uh, live entertainment, Saturday nights. That's about all they can offer, I guess. Uh, there might be a jade trade. We'll see. So he he looks over at his wife and he goes. So Captain uh, Captain Cocker looks over at his wife and he goes, "Hey, why don't you stop drinking?" And then she emasculates him by saying, "You don't have, do you have enough strength to stop me or even make it in bed?" I gotta tell you, you know, speaking of raw force, uh, Betty is the soulmate for Lloyd. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. These two belong Oh my together. god, if they had met, it would have been amazing. She just like, okay, so the whole movie, all she does is just rip on this guy. Just emasculates him constantly. In some of the best lines in this movie, she's my favorite character for sure. <laughs> but there's at one point where you don't blame him for what he does. <laughs> Of all the characters, <laughs> Hines is the one you get. Yeah. Like, I almost have sympathy for Hines. I don't have any sympathy for Kevin Hall, All-American Hero, because he's kind of a real asshole. Oh, yeah. But Hines, you, you kind of get it, so. He's been through some shit. And we're not talking about the war. <laughs> <laughs> the cocks end their fight, and a champion is crowned, and <laughs> raised their, their hand is raised in the air and everything. <laughs> the wing is raised in <laughs> yeah, the air. they give him a championship belt. We've declared belt. it King Cock. <laughs> And then some French captain guy, uh, he comes over to talk to the husband, and then we learn that there's, like, some sort of extra passenger. And, like, so basically they're all going to take a plane ride to this valley of the dinosaurs because there's a lot of bones there. This is, is what we're told. Yeah, this is the raw force part where there is, there might as well be a brochure for this valley that you're not allowed to go to, but everybody's going to fly to it. Yeah, it's, it's part raw force, part Skull Island. And so, okay, but what the... The Captain Hines says to him is he says, I don't think that anybody will care where we're going because the passengers will be happy they're getting a free ride. And I write, no, they won't. I'm like, what fucking plane makes a pit stop? They're like, all right, we know you bought a ticket to New York, everybody, but guess what? We're throwing in a free trip to Chicago on the way. You'd be like, no. <laughs> also, Nicolas Cage needs to get home to his family. <laughs> so he's going to ride in the plane, yeah. too. I'm like, what? Okay, so, by the way, none of this matters because the people who are dubbing this movie, they they don't have any clue. They're like, what? What? Why are these people going on this plane? Yeah, I feel like the people <laughs> doing the dubbing are doing a cold read. <laughs> yeah, they're like, why are they going to this part of the jungle? I mean, I don't know. We got to make up something. Just say something like this Heinz guy he wants a bone. <laughs> Guys, do we ever follow up anything with Captain Hines and dinosaur bones or anything like no. this? No, no. So what is this about? <clears throat> he said he wasn't going to fly him unless the professor gave him permission. That's, I think, yeah, what Yeah, but came does from the this. professor even know they're going to Dinosaur Valley? Well, I don't believe so. The, it, the, yeah, the, the who voiceover the, guy knows. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Like even the dub, like even the people that are dubbing this are confused. Like, well, we gotta say something. In my notes, it's really I have it's incoherent as to what I wrote down because okay. none of it makes sense. All we could say is so for the all of this that we're establishing, which by the way, it gets better before <laughs> it changes into a different movie. Just know that there's a bunch of fucking misfits that are gonna get on a plane that will eventually crash. Right. And none of this that we're establishing in the beginning of bones and smuggling bones and collecting bones and bone bones and cockfights and... We're all just killing time, <laughs> cock man. Cockfights, cockfights, whatever you want to do, all of it means nothing. Run time, baby. Because the movie's about to change completely. So Kevin offers the Frenchman pilot a drink, and he says, this is great, by the way, this is dubbed. I'm American, you French? Sweet. You can guess what I do. I'll buy you a whole case of that. Well, I'm afraid you lost. You're a bone hunter. 
and I write bone hunter. I beg your pardon, that's, sir. <laughs> that's a profession. <laughs> and he just he goes, well, how would you know that? And that he never answers. By the way, he just. <laughs> Apparently, from the look of Kevin Hall, All-American Hero, you can say, like, that guy hunts bones. <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't know bone hunter was a profession, but apparently it is. I'm going to start printing up business cards that list me as a bone hunter. <laughs> bone hunter. So I say, I don't understand. Is he not, okay, is he not a passenger asking to visit the Valley of the Dinosaur Bones? I, 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 I'm like, I'm so confused at the point. I write in my notes how many people are bone hunters in this area. Is Captain Hines doing the same thing? I don't even know what the fuck's going on. But then he's like, oh, hey, by the way, can I hitch a ride on that plane you're going to be taking out tomorrow? He's like, no, we don't have any seats. It's full. And he's like, please, can I please go? And he's all, oh, well, if you talk to the professor, Pedro Abanez. And he's like, oh, Pedro Abanez? Okay. The Pedro Abanez. Now, if you're confused by this, yeah, yeah, it's fucking confusing. Should be. We're throwing around the term bone hunter and then talking about a plane and going to a dinosaur valley. Does this movie have anything to do with dinosaurs? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, believe it or not, it does. Like, not bones either. Dinosaur parts. It's very... <sighs> Anyways, we go to... <laughs> so, this is probably the most insane scene in this movie. Is the models and the photographer come back into the cockfight. And the photographer runs in, and he's all mad at uh, Chubby Intern, who we will never see again. No, this is the the big final scene of that arc. Yeah, that's a wrap on uh, Chubby, or whatever his name is. Carlito. Carlito, uh, or the guy from Lost. Hurley. Uh, Hurley from Lost. Uh, And he has a little dumb DeLuise hat on, which I did enjoy. (laughs) He has, like, the fat man hat on, so. Then the models walk in, right? And... Oh my God! Now this is like a like a real scene you'd see uh, on the street in Italy. Yeah, is <laughs> this degenerate man kind of like he looks over at one of the models and he goes up to Kevin and he's like, "Look at her!" And then as I describe it, he he like walks over to her, lifts up her skirt, gets on his knees on the ground, and then kisses her butt cheek. And when she looks down at him, he just does a little kissy face at her. It is uh, disturbing. Oh, like, I mean, this one's a. This is a real. Uh, you no, know, he doesn't even go for for up top first. Yeah, he's, he's going, not. Uh, he's, going, he's on a schedule here. <laughs> going straight to A. This guy. He's going right down. Then okay. Then it gets worse because then he stands up and pulls down her shirt and, as I write, just starts kind of sucking it right in the middle of a party, right in the middle of a cockfight party. And you think at least one of the chickens would get in there and intervene. <laughs> Like, hey, I mean, hey, hey, pal. I mean, this is becoming a porno in the middle of a cockfight. I mean, come on, people. Let's have standards here. Right. You know? One of the chickens does intervene. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, then all of a sudden, okay, so this is where we kind of get the first thing of Kevin Hall, All-American Hero, not giving a shit. Yeah. Because he kind of just goes like, ugh, and kind of like shakes his head. He walks over and like grabs the guy by the hair and then just kind of lightly tosses him over. While the guy pulls out a giant machete, by the way. From his shirt. Yeah. He like just, just out, of, out from me. Like, I don't know how he was storing it in there. Uh, and then all of a sudden. And he gently tosses him by the hair like into the air. Yeah, into the cockfight. Like over a table. Like just kind of like, and throws him into the cockfight ring. Can't be asked. Into the cock ring. All of a sudden, Kevin backs up into a big guy, like a huge black man. Big greased up black guy. Who says, gringo, that's my brother you hit. And I wrote, there is no way these guys are brothers. No way. Because this man is black, and that man was, he's not black. Portuguese. I mean, you could say that, right? But I was like, they don't look alike at all. Like, there's no well, way I mean, in hell they're brothers. But it, it's a gag. Will Kevin Hall reference it? We'll find out. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, but basically, Okay, so then he backs up. There's an even larger guy. And he's like, that's also my brother. And I write, this one I do believe, because he, he does look a little bit similar to the guy. Right. Uh, and then Kevin points out the irony, and he says, well, judging by the difference between you, your mother must have been mighty busy. <laughs> And then on that punchline, he grabs a chair <laughs> and smashes it over the chest of one of the guys, and the guy no sells it. Just yeah, stands does there. No reaction. And then with the piece left, he breaks it over the other guy, who also no reaction, no sell. And then <laughs> they both kick his ass while like the whole Looney Tunes, man. It, yeah, it's. I have it down as a Three Stooges fight. Yeah. Like it's really just. 
And the hotel manager and the pilot are just watching. And this is when I fucking lost it. And I said, this fucking hotel manager. I'm like, do something. What kind of hotel you're running here? Like, first of all, you let a guy rape a woman in your lobby. I mean, I know we're letting cockfights go on. That's one thing. But you let a woman get... A guest of yours, by the way, getting raped in the lobby. Like, what do you think she would... Could she go complain to the front desk? He'd be like, eh, you know, boys you know will be boys. There <laughs> are no rules at the Pollo Del Rio. <laughs> This is Brazil, baby. That's right. Uh, you know, jungle rules out here. Uh, but then, like, he does nothing when his other guest is... Like, there's just massive brawl happening, and tables are being broken, and cocks are flying everywhere, and nobody's doing shit. But he just says, quote, The American is courageous, but why would he want to fight monsters like that for? Okay. It's the dub, man. They did not. This dub is yeah. not consistent at all through the whole movie. Yeah, there's no. This there's is no, that guy did not say that in the scene. This is definitely a case of like the American distributor just being like, I don't, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. First of all, this guy's grabbing a tit, and then he's thrown across the room, and then there's these big guys. I mean, are those his brothers? Oh, that would make a good joke. By well, the that'd way, be something. <laughs> So we go to later in bed and like Kevin's all bruised up and hurt, right? Don't worry, he'll heal by the morning. And the, the model he <laughs> saved comes into his room and quote, thanks him. Yeah, she says, I, I wanted to thank you my way. And then the steel drum comes on. <laughs> la, 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 And uh, now, we see I don't know about you guys, scene. but I don't think I could, uh, I could perform to music like that. <laughs> What, you think she brought it? She puts just, in a uh, tape? That's her theme song when she just walks around. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we watch an extended sex scene between them. It was long, right? And there was it was awkward. To the happiest to the, music. To that music. To world music of children singing. <laughs> I get to fucking use that commercial. What is the Michael Jackson one? This is when they were passing around the donation plate around the theater. Come on, everybody. Save the world. Donate. <laughs> Dig deep. <laughs> You're, you're going to be jingling around in your pocket anyways. Why don't you pull out some change, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to, okay, th- now this is even worse, right? So by the way, that model just walked right into his room, right? So now we learn that there's no locks or shut doors in this hotel. Everybody just leaves it the fuck open. Because Kevin, in the morning now, just walks into a fucking hotel room. He just walks into the bathroom. Kevin Hall, all-American hero, walks into, again, our hero, our protagonist, walks into a random person's room, and he just sees the professor's daughter taking a bath while standing up, which was is a, a very interesting way to take a bath. It's tedious. And she Next says, time. <laughs> she goes, is that you, father? Would you bring me my bathrobe? And like I said, again, she's way too comfortable being sexual around her father. He, Maybe he was actually going to, like, close his eyes and just throw it in there. Not enter the room okay. and say, is this what you want? <laughs> because the way... Well, no, he didn't even do that. Yeah. Kevin's like, oh, well, this is obviously an invitation. You know, me, American hero, Kevin Hall. I already banged one <laughs> already banged one uh, guest in this hotel. Might as well make it a double. He's Go a, for the Queen 20. He's a cousin of uh, Steve Hardman. <laughs> and so he walks into the bathroom, grabs her bathrobe, and then she's like, oh, you're not my father. And then he's just like, plays with her like, hey, you want it, don't you? Just to get like a few extra looksies, a few two points. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I was like, what the, the hell's this movie about again? Yeah, we're like, okay, what? What is going on? Where, where right. are we gonna get to the massacre? Somehow he wants a flight out of this. From- yeah, so this is his way of getting a flight. Is he's like, well, I might as well, you know, torment this guy's daughter, I'm sexually harass <laughs> this woman here. Then the professor shows up magically, and I write, I think he was in the corner jacking off. Like he got, he, comes, he got blocked. The door he got comes blocked. in this way too quickly, Hughes. He's just like immediately in yeah, the it's sort of the, who the hell is this guy? Wait yeah. a minute. I was like, do you think this is their whole fetish? He's like, all right, now you're going to pretend you're my daughter. Stand up in that tub with the door cracked. I'll be in the corner. And then you ask me for the bathroom. All right, ready? Go. Turns out, uh, in his case, three is not all right with me. <laughs> Kevin introduces himself, and he's like, I've read all your books, and the professor's all excited about it. Uh, and it, we, this is where we learn his daughter's name is Ava. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he's like, Ava, he's read all my books. And she's like, well, if you want, and he's like, hey, can I go on that flight with you to that dinosaur valley? You know, the cursed one or something? We're, we're going to vaguely say it's cursed as to why maybe our plane will crash. Uh, and he's like, yeah, sure. And she's like, well, if you want my opinion, no. She says no. I mean, this guy's a fucking creeper. He just came into the bathroom. He ruined our jack-off session. Like, it's a real no. But then the professor says, like, well, how can I refuse the one person in the world who's read all my books? And even though he has basically come in, spied on his daughter, 
he's going to let him on the airplane because you know what? He's read all his books and he's a real bone smuggler, so he's real interested <laughs> in it. God, is there anyone we can root for in this movie? Well, the natives. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now the movie changes. The plane is taking off, okay? And Finally. By the way, we have to get one more fucking gratuitous shot of the hotel manager. Why he's at the fucking airport, I don't know, but he just shakes his head like, oh boy. Like, <laughs> well, he's a travel agent too. Remember that. <laughs> he handles everything. <sighs> okay. Let's remember that. But I write, why is he here and who the fuck cares what he thinks? Because I hope I'll never see him again. I won't. <laughs> Your wish is granted. But let's keep this in mind because there's going to be something that happens in a few minutes from now where I get really pissed off because I'm like, well, he, he was useful for one reason, but let's just forget he fucking exists, right? We get on this plane, right? And so like Kevin doesn't have a seat. He's just sitting in the aisle eating a fucking banana. And there's a real, as I put a real, a love square going on. <laughs> Oh, you guys know each other? <laughs> because it's not even a triangle. This is a four-way, you know, a fatal four-way we got going here. <laughs> a fatal fuck-way. <laughs> like, we have Kevin's, like, looking. He's just, like, eating a banana staring at Ava. Like you do. Yeah. Like, hey, this banana. Well, actually, maybe you should be chewing this banana because it's probably not attractive for you to Hey, you know of, what? It worked for me Dolomite. <laughs> uh, he's eating this little banana staring at her. And then... Like, by the way, where did he get the banana? Did he smuggle that banana too? Yeah, he had. He was in oh a truck full God. of bananas. <laughs> he brought it with him. He, he is both bone smuggler and banana <laughs> smuggler. Very similar smuggling. It's then, true. Like, so the wife, the cuck wife, she's staring at Kevin the whole time, and then Captain Cuck is staring at Kevin, and then Ava's just like, kind of like it's like I said, it's like a fatal fuck way, like it's a four way. F- on here like we don't know what's going on there's all these like emotions running high uh, <laughs> oh you think there was that much build and tense in there? there's nothing there's My, just four people staring at each other with no vo mike was riveted though yeah. he was like, what's like, gonna happen he, he was like, writing his own movie hell? yeah like there's too much going on mike like, was doing his own dub <laughs> Uh, okay. So You're this, so pretty. This is amazing, though. <laughs> I'm an American hero, you know. <laughs> He's just doing crown voices yeah. over it. <laughs> no, I have, a, I have my... De- come on, guys. I have my Massacre in Dinosaur Valley fan fiction. <laughs> Your slash fic? <laughs> yeah. My Michael Sopcu fan fiction. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that Fifty Shades of Grey cannibal movie. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Sopcu? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so okay this is when the movie changes into a completely different movie as they're flying over the jungle and then captain cuck says he's like you know i know something about living in the jungle i used to live in the jungle for th- more than three years and his wife goes yeah in vietnam tell them about it you just love that filthy war he was a big hero that's all he ever talks about <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, but, like, he comes back from the Vietnam War. He has, like, a fucking purple heart, maybe a Medal of Honor or something. And he's she's like, you're like, not going to believe what happened while I was there. And then he chooses a vacation in the jungle. Because <laughs> that's he all he knows now. He can't get enough of it. He can't, he can't get out of it. But you imagine him come home. He comes home to his front door. He's there. His wife greets him. He's got the purple heart. He's got the Medal of Honor. And she's like, oh, you think you're a big man now, huh, Johnny? Well, that's, huh? How, that's how they ended up on this trip because they were in one of those fights. He's like, you know what? I'd rather be back in the shit than deal with you for one more minute. And then she pulled out the phone and was like, oh, oh, we can make that happen. You want to go back to the jungle? We're going to go back to the jungle. And here they are. Can you imagine him every night he comes home and he's like, did I ever tell you this story? Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. The one oh. where you saved a hundred men. Yeah, yeah, I've heard it, Johnny. Oh, you <laughs> went to Vietnam, your friends died. <laughs> eh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> You're not. I don't think you're, you're setting her up enough. To, she's probably like one of the ugliest women I've ever seen. <laughs> she had a lot of uh, plastic surgery. She looks like though. the woman from Cool World, the cartoon version of it. When... <laughs> Like, she starts going back and forth into, like, the candy cane. I think it's her personality that's tainting oh it for you. Yeah. This is a real bot She's surgery. just so unpleasant. All your friends died, Johnny. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. You know what? I don't even have friends. I have to sit in this house all day and... <laughs> And a whole a whole collection of dog tags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Well, When's the last time you walked the dog, eh? <laughs> and every night, every night, he just kind of sinks back into those memories of Vietnam. And he's like, if I could just get back to that fucking jungle. <laughs> so then... <laughs> But by the way, the way, his way of dealing with it is she just emasculates him in front of everybody and even makes fun of him for being a war hero. He just leaves, he you know, leaves like the room. like you do with war heroes. So what he does is he leaves the room and takes it out on the pilot. He walks into the cockpit and he goes, hey, why don't you fly this plane straight, you fucking loser? Meanwhile, she's in the background like, I like ones who don't get captured. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, Johnny. Did you ever tell him about how you were too much of a puss and you got captured and that's why you're there for three years? You fucking pussy. You and your friend John just <laughs> hung out in the POW camp. Yeah, you and McCain, the two Johnnies. <laughs> Bunch of pussies. All I want to say is I hope you get cancer. But. <laughs> well, she did. <laughs> she survived it. So. Uh, so the plane starts wobbling and it's going to go down, right? And the wife just starts laughing and drinking more. She's And she says, quote, I bet it's the curse of the Valley of the Dinosaurs that's doing it. Yeah, I'll drink to that. And then she starts. <laughs> She's gone full Lloyd. <laughs> She's just like laughing and drinking, and then all of a sudden, the plane just actually crashes. But what I say is, we cut to a model plane being thrown into a puddle of mud. But yep, it's great. You can see the string. Like, wrote, it's it's really it's very Ed Wood. I wrote there was no survivors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this is like a Fisher Price toy just being tossed into a puddle. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and it's all cut together. And, and I was the expecting way, the Spinosaurus to show up. <laughs> By the way, this the, is very Jurassic Park 3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Uh, and the wife is like freaking out at this point. She's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Johnny, save me. Save me. And everybody's screaming. And we cut to the wreckage. And like everybody's all bloody and people are cut up. People are dead. Oh, By yeah. the way, you remember that model we spent all that time introducing and had that sex scene with? Well, we already saw it. So she's fucking dead. Like we just get her out of the movie. I was disappointed. I thought they should have kept her and got rid of the one that we didn't know anything about. Yeah. Yeah, because it's kind of funny. Like, we didn't learn anything about the other model. Oh, we'll, uh, Belinda. Yeah, but Belinda. Belinda. The most <laughs> interesting name for a model, by the way. Do you think that's her real model name that they would use in Playboy? They're like, and here we got Belinda. <laughs> they got to pay by the letter, man. You got to hear a shorter name. This is yeah, Queen she, B. Bell. <laughs> Bell. Uh, so, Dolomite's looking for Queen B again. <laughs> Okay, the wife is freaking out, right? And she's just she's like, Johnny, we're all gonna die, we're all gonna die, we're all gonna die. And then he slaps her in the face. It's the only time in the whole movie he ever stands up to her, which is bizarre. It's like the one time where he just fucking <coughs> loses it. But it's, it's not really right him losing. Face. It's that old school, like, you know, you know, they do this in so many old movies where the woman is going into hysterics and, you know, the brave guy comes over and slaps her one. I have a, a different theory. This is where this guy's character changes and now he's back in his element oh. and he doesn't put up with shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's and that's why he, he did the, it. Like he, he smelled the jungle. The jungle leaves were in his in his brain. Like he's become fully immersed. Like he's so glad he's like it's good to be home. They should have done a faint. You hear a helicopter going. <laughs> He's digging through her purse trying to find her eyeliner so he can paint stripes onto his face. Like, <laughs> this because he, he has now become like Captain Kurtz in uh, Apocalypse Now. You know, he is now fully Marlon Brando. He's like, it's good to be home, boys. Here we go. We're in the jungle now. And he, <laughs> he starts like he starts bossing everybody around and he totally becomes a different character. Uh, he's like, we're in my element now and you're going to do what I say. I survived three years out here. Me and a monkey. <laughs> we know a lot about what's going on down here. <laughs> I once saved a bunch of white girls, uh, some white girls and her friends. <laughs> Isn't that we right? We made it up the river. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the wife, okay. So, it, let's go over who lived. So Ugly, American, uh, Ugly Marilyn lived. Betty. Pilot died. Yeah, the pilot's dead. The model's dead. Veteran lived. The camera guy lived. Camera guy's alive, yeah. yeah. Belinda, one of the models lived. Eva and Belinda are both alive. Kevin Hall, all-American hero, is alive. Ava's alive. Kevin Hall has no scratches on him. And then, yeah, not even a scratch. He covered himself in the American flag and he made it through. (laughs) And then, uh, as we know, uh, the professor is alive at this point. Okay. Uh, which is, look good though. Which yeah. is great because <laughs> things, things aren't looking so great. <laughs> so <laughs> Captain Cuck takes over, right? And he says, I'm going to use my Vietnam skills to help everybody. And he's happy to be back in his element. And Kevin and Ava are like, all right, well, we're not going to leave the plane because uh, her father's going to die. He doesn't look too good. And then he comes over and he goes, there's nothing more we can do now. He just died. <laughs> and like his tongue is all rolled over and she just drops him as he says that he just died <laughs> it's like well we're like, done ew, <laughs> ew. a dead guy from whence it came not I'm really my like- dad <laughs> oh, God, that game's over. Thanks. Single. <laughs> so here's the thing that really fucking pisses me off, guys. They're all going to leave the the, the plane, plane, right? Because of why? Because they have to, they're going to uh, walk their way out of the jungle by using the, the Amazon River because nobody's ever going to find them because they're so far off course. Okay, here's the thing. They say over and over again, nobody knew we were going to the Valley of the Dinosaurs because we put it in our travel manifest that we were going to this other place. Yeah, except for the fucking guy 
who booked the goddamn plane for you? Who's the goddamn hotel manager who's going to be wondering, why aren't all my guests coming back? I don't think he will because he'd get in trouble. Yeah. But he is the one person who knows where they are. Yeah, but it was illegal for them to go there. But he could have said something like, well, I told him not to go there. He doesn't have to this blame This guy it. lets women get raped in his lobby and holds <laughs> cockfights for money. The guy who didn't intervene with any of that shit is suddenly going to care about I, these I don't people. think you understand his character. He just turns up that world music. <laughs> <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Thursday cockfights. Here we go. There's a new blue bus coming every day. <laughs> da, 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 da. If there's one thing Brazil knows, there's more white people coming. <laughs> so <laughs> we go to the jungle, right? And the soldier guy's all excited. He's like running around them with the shetty. He's like, are you guys ready? <laughs> I can't wait. Hey, he's like a kid who just went through the turnstile at Disneyland. <laughs> it's the good old days. Yeah, he's a kid again. <laughs> We're back, baby. <laughs> I'm going to make an ear necklace. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and so Belinda like kind of falls over, right? Because for some reason she's decided to wear high heels in the jungle. <laughs> like you're fucking better good, off good without call. them. Good call. This part is crazy. So Captain John Hines, Captain John Rambo takes, he's like, give me your heels. Yeah. She broke one heel. She doesn't know what she's going to do. He's like, I got this. He takes the machete and cuts the heels off, so now they're flats, right? Yeah, yeah, that's n- that's normal. But at the same time, he like looks up her skirt. Well, because he he notices that from his angle, he's looking right at it. Yeah, and like you said, Bobby, the last thing that's been discharged is him from the army, and that was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And he goes into another trance. He's just staring, and it's just <laughs> "Hello, darkness, my old friend." <laughs> and as we get this really creepy shot of a woman's underwear, and then. She's got to chime in. We hear in the back room, background, Betty the wife. You enjoying the view, Johnny boy? <laughs> <laughs> and like everybody's just staring at him. Like he must have been staring at the, the crotch for a while because everybody's giving him a look like you're a real sick fuck. You know that? <laughs> do, do you think for a second, Heinz assumed this was a chatterbox situation? <laughs> <laughs> and he it hears, speaks to me. You enjoying the view, Johnny boy? And he jumps back. He just looks at it. He goes, you shut up. You shut up right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That would have been fucking amazing. It would have been a fourth movie. Okay. I saw this once before in Saigon. <laughs> so now this is when the second movie begins, which is the cannibal chase. Like now these people are now trying to get away from cannibals because now we just walk around for a while, right? We, we deal with leeches for a second. We do have this great scene where Kevin eats a leech off his own arm and spits, it, spits it, out. it out. It was good. Uh, then they come across a bunch of human skulls on trees and spikes, and right? these are a uh, discount. This looks like Halloween decoration. <laughs> I expected one of the skulls to go and start shaking while they walked by it. This is what's so amazing is so they're sitting here with all these skulls, right? (laughs) And Kevin blames this on Captain Hines. He's like, you should have known where we were going on that map. And I'm like, how the fuck would he know where cannibals live, guy? He's been in the jungle. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the cannibal camps are marked on the <laughs> yeah, map. They're, they're I think clearly, he's just, you know what, Heinz? They're clearly marked on the map, okay? I think he's just trying to head for water. <laughs> yeah, Like all drinkable, potable water. All he said was we should follow the Amazon River. Yeah, eventually we'll get out. Yeah, you eventually we'll hit a town. And Kevin's like, well, this is all your fault. And then here's the question I have for you guys. Now, if you saw a bunch of heads on spikes... Which way are you going to walk? Are you going to walk into them? Or are you going to walk away from them? How do you know which way they are? Like, how do you know? Because it starts here and they're facing you. Well, you definitely, you know the part you came from. I'm going back that way. Yeah. Okay. You know, once I see the skulls, I'm probably getting back on the plane. Yeah. Because you know what? It's a fucking <laughs> warning. Yeah. They're trying to tell you, stay out. Yeah. Okay? Don't come here. This land past this point. That's the is, sorry we're closed yeah, side. Owned by another people. Don't come into our fucking land. But they're like, you know, the only way through is through. And they just start walking through. You gotta through. go forward to go back. <laughs> yeah. They, yep. <laughs> they just start walking through these, this place. And then the wife, of course, has got to say something. She goes, look at him playing the great hero. If, he, if they only knew the truth. Yeah, and what's the truth? I'm like, oh, please explain to us the truth about Captain I. There's the uh, deleted scene of what really happened in Nam. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm telling you, the real reason he's there for three years is because he... <laughs> Because he fucked an underage girl, and they put him in a in a Vietnam prison. Like that's the only reason he was there. You were never even in <laughs> Vietnam. You said you had bone spurs. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, just going to Vietnam. Tell him you weren't even in the fucking war, were you? You went there and you fucking lied to everybody so you could get on a sex vacation. You fucking pervert. Tell him where you bought those fatigues, Johnny boy. <laughs> Anybody can get a Medal of Honor with enough money, you puss. You know, it's funny. I don't remember them calling it Little Saigon over there. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, so then, okay, they keep walking, right? They walk right into the cannibal camp, and then they get down because they're like, oh, wait, I hear somebody. Yeah, no fucking shit. You walked right into their goddamn camp. They're like chanting loudly, and it sounds like a thousand people. Like, yeah. la, 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 la. And they're just running, 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 and we just watch them run. We see that Betty has put her arm into the water, and it comes out, and she's got leeches all over it. Now, this is where I think he does this on purpose, is like Heinz looks at him, and he goes, oh, we, we, we shouldn't take those off right now. You'll get gangrene. Oh, yeah. It's definitely, uh, I want to make her suffer a little bit. Yeah, because I'm like, well, Kevin just took them off, no problem. But he's like, no, 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 keep those on for a while. Then we cut to later. They all have to stop from exhaustion, and Betty's all complaining. She's like, oh, it hurts, Johnny, it hurts. All the leeches, it hurts. And then... He's like, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Okay, this is amazing. So the photographer, right? He tells the photographer something like, go get me some kindling, because I'm going to light a fire to get leeches off her arm. The photographer gets up to go walk out, right? And he has his cameras with him. And Captain Hines goes like, what do you need that bag for? And he's like, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I mean, we're well, well, just going to find the river and go back. And he's like, no, no, give me that bag. It's too big. It's too much. And he takes it and he just starts smashing the cameras onto the ground. He's like, you're slowing Jumbo yourself paranoia. down. You're slowing us all down. And everybody's like, wow, he's, he's becoming a real dick. I liked him better when he was a cock. Yeah. Then they hear the cannibals nearby. By the way, he's all on and on and on about we shouldn't make too much noise and we shouldn't do this. He's smashing cameras <laughs> onto the ground. Right. He's screaming at people. He's starting fire. He's lighting fires. Because <laughs> he wants them to come. <laughs> but then, okay, he lights a fire and he burns the leeches off his wife's arm and then he starts eating them. And, and then, it like oozed like this white pus yeah, that was, came out of and it. And he's like, you better eat what you can find. And then Ava, because when he saw those leeches on his wife's arm, he was like, good dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then like some snake tries to attack Ava, but Kevin throws. Okay, so this is amazing. So she's like, ah, a snake, and she doesn't move. There's just a snake there. And then he, Kevin, Kevin Hall, all American hero, just walks over and just grabs the snake and just throws it maybe three feet away. It's the same yeah. thing he did with the rapist back at the hotel. <laughs> he just like walks over and casually tosses the thing. It's it, still right there. It needed yeah. a bigger snake that was his brother to show up. <laughs> that would have been the, great. Like the an anaconda. anaconda. <laughs> John Voight and the Anaconda shows up. That was my brother. <laughs> so, so then the soldier convinces, he's like, all right, we should uh, keep walking because we got to find a river. And then they find a river. By the way, is the water running? No. Mm -mm. Don't drink that water. They all get down on their knees and start shoving this like still bad water in move. their mouths. <laughs> I write bad, bad, bad idea in my notes. Uh, and then the soldier notices, okay, yeah, then we get a whole thing where Captain Hines goes into another one of his dazes and he starts hearing the chatterbox voice <laughs> as he just stares at Ava and, and uh, Belinda. Is that her name? Belinda? Belinda. 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 As they have, like, wet T-shirts now, and he's just like, oh, and he gets into his daze. <laughs> and of course, of course, how is this going to end? Getting cucked. Yeah, of course, that's where the, the line comes in, where Belinda is like, uh, is the jungle giving you delusions of manhood, Johnny boy? <laughs> and she continues, uh, you're just like a dog chasing a car. If you did catch it, all you could do is smell it and run. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Great line. I was like, yo, I guess you always wonder what a dog would do if he catched the car. I guess he would just smell it and run. So, like, can you imagine? Like, I kept thinking this mental image of him just running up and going, and then running. And running back into the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Just like Fogarty told him. And Okay, so then all of a sudden, Kevin stands up, and he's like, we're being surrounded. And everybody's like, uh, what? No, it's just animal noises. And then him, okay. It's just the predator. They get in, like, a big fight, right? Oh, no, they're about to get in a big fight. But then Kevin pulls out his gun. And the and Captain Hines is about to pull a knife out, and Kevin says, oh, "No, I'm sorry." Kevin points the gun at the soldier, mm -hmm. and he pulls out a knife. And the wife Betty says to Kevin, "Do it now, kill him, go on, shoot." <laughs> <laughs> and and I just write, "How come this guy has not killed his wife at some point? Like, could he he could just easily just take this machete, cut the head off, and goes? We all agree it was cannibals, right? I mean, <laughs> right? At I this mean, point, I don't think anyone would disagree." <laughs> They'd be like, thank you, yeah. But I thought like Kevin had that line where the the knife wasn't all the way out, but he's like, go ahead, pull that smoke wagon or whatever. You know, like that old 
a Western stare down. That was like the weird VO that was over it. Yeah, Kevin Hall, <laughs> All American Hero, has some of the most bizarre lines. He really does. Like really bizarre one liners. Like they were either written to fill as much like as his lips were moving, or like it's Italians trying to write American. <laughs> American dialogue. I don't know. Uh, so then we go to more walking, uh, and the photographer is then attacked by piranhas. Yeah, quickly for no reason. In like a puddle. In yeah. a puddle. He's a like, puddle ah! full of piranhas, <laughs> and he's attacked by a, a piranha that bites it all the way down to the the bone. Yeah, it's yep. it's very Looney Tunes as well. Or he pulls out his leg, and it's just like the exposed bone. There's no meat left. Yeah, the the whole. Yeah, you're right. To the bone. Like it was clean. It like this is. I I can't even eat a chicken wing this clean. Oh, you know? Show you how. <laughs> There's a trick to it. Uh, and one of his legs chewed down to the bone, and he's like begging the soldiers, like, help me, help me. So he helps him. Heinz helps him by stabbing him in the back with the machete. He just runs him through Fucking like Jason Voorhees. Just kills him. <laughs> just and this dead. is amazing. Is Kevin says to him, Kevin Hall, all American hero, with his one liners, he goes, You stinking murderer. And then we have this lame white guy fight. <laughs> By the way, did you notice where they fight? Right yeah. in the same piranha they jump water. They into the piranha puddle, <laughs> but the piranha has eaten an entire leg yeah. and is so therefore it's disinterested. It's not interested in cook. Or it was cook. a lucky fall and they crushed the one piranha that No, the piranha wants to, to eat the loser. There needed to be a part, <laughs> there needed to be a part where Betty goes, he won't, they, even the piranhas won't eat you, Johnny. <laughs> you don't even have enough meat for the fish. <laughs> Even they won't suck you. <laughs> it would have been great if Kevin Hall, all American hero, just had a piranha stuck to him, but it couldn't get through the meat because he's so buff. <laughs> and he just pulls it off and eats it. <laughs> yeah, he eats. He bites it. <laughs> and he tosses the, the cartoon bone. <laughs> There's could have been a part where he dives in the water, like teeth first, and comes out with a piranha. <laughs> <laughs> Shaking Who's a piranha back, move? fucker. <laughs> They get in a fight in Piranha Infestor Water. Nothing happens to them. Captain Hines punches Kevin down a waterfall. As, <laughs> it's a hell of a punch. <laughs> or as we see, he punches a dummy down a waterfall. Well, yeah. <laughs> a rock slide or a waterfall or whatever. Because you just see this dummy go down this thing. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> and by the way, all of a sudden now there's alligators. At the bottom of that little... Yeah, like I didn't even know that they existed in well, South yeah, America. I mean, he left the piranha level and he moved on to the alligator <laughs> yeah, level. Now, now he's in the alligator alligator level and like this alligator goes into the water and kevin like swims out and he gets to shore and then one almost bites his foot and but it's like the just, smallest gator yeah. in the world yeah a, a baby alligator <laughs> hissing at him uh and then he just kind of walks away <laughs> and we see this like montage of kevin on his own and then the soldier with the other people and they're just kind of walking around with the music from the other movie that michael Sopke was in <laughs> <laughs> uh and then at one point like ava leaves behind a gun for kevin like, yeah leaves, leaves behind his gun did you guys notice like they kept having monkey sound effects yeah and i was like that's not a monkey that's a person doing a monkey well yeah that was the natives Oh, it was supposed to be the natives? Yeah. They, okay. That was the whole car, whole argument that uh, Kevin and the, vet, the veteran Okay, because rabbing. I'm like, this is clearly a man on a microphone going, whoa, whoa. Yeah, there's a line earlier where the, ah, Kevin ah. is talking about how he, he, he knows what this is. And uh, and Hines asks him, uh, where'd you learn so much about these bloodthirsty bastards? You shack up with one? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me all about it. So God, I want it, details. It has to be better than what I'm shacking up Every with. stroke. I want every <laughs> So yeah, the Indians are all around them. Natives, I, they call them Indians, but yeah, the, the natives, cannibals, the cannibals are all around them, yeah. and they're making these like monkey sounds. And the 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 Vietnam vet says, "Oh, I heard this in Vietnam. It's just it's just animals." And plenty it's, of South American cannibals making yeah. monkey sounds. Yeah, over and, in Vietnam, <laughs> <laughs> just like uh, the piranhas. You know? Yeah, he knows all that shit from Vietnam. The piranhas in the ocean and raw okay. force, you know. <laughs> I do enjoy the fact that this movie, if you took that out, would be just fine. You didn't have to have that they were being surrounded. You could have just put one line. Hey, you know, they're close. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> but but no, we get 20 all... minutes of that and we get like chanting. And then, so Ava and the model are caught by cannibals, okay? And then the wife, okay, this this is probably one of the best scenes in the movie. Well, Betty suddenly falls in quicksand. Like, she's running and then just sinks old, right into the ground. The old quicksand trope. Yeah, the old Bugs Bunny. <laughs> Which probably not even a real thing. No, it's, it would... it's definitely not. Quicksand is not a thing that can happen to you. <laughs> because she just falls into, like, a puddle of mud. And she's like, oh, Johnny, it's quicksand, it's it, quicksand. It's, it's like in Nightmare on Elm Street when the stairs turn into Bisquick. <laughs> Nancy's trying to run from Freddy and her feet go... <laughs> Into the stairs. Did we explain, by the way, that Betty is carrying around like a makeup case? Yeah. With her everywhere. That wasn't slowing her down. She was carrying a lunchbox. 
You, you think at some point the photographer's like, well, how come your wife gets to carry around her makeup? She needs her makeup. She needs it. You shut the fuck up. Do you want to tell her not to bring it? <laughs> she falls into this quicksand. She's like, Johnny, Johnny, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And then he just kind of looks back at her. He, he contemplated for a while that he... There's a mm, moment. Am I going to save her? He's yeah. Like, eh, okay. Eh. He remembers He remembers that she was once his wife for a second. <laughs> he has a flashback to happier times and then immediately takes an arrow to the knee. Yeah. He gets... Like an arrow shoots the ground and he's like, oh, I got to go. And then he starts running away. And then he gets one in the knee. Yeah. She yells at him as he's running away. You yellow bastard. <laughs> She's going down <laughs> in the quicksand. <laughs> she had to get one more line out, right? Okay. So this is where Sergeant Hines... He's getting shot by arrow after arrow, and now he has fully left this plane of existence. He's getting the the full Boromir, like Lord of the Rings. He's just taking like a hundred arrows. Because he starts yelling, and these are direct quotes. He says, Where are you hiding, gooks? Come on out, come out! Goddamn gooks! I kill you! I missed you so much. <laughs> Let me look at you one last time. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, then the cannibal chief comes over, cuts his heart out, raises it in the air, and he eats it. And a voice comes over and goes, fatality. <laughs> we are now 45 minutes in this movie. We are. And at this point, I only know of one person that's alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at this point, it's like, okay, so we got Kevin Hall, all-American hero. That's it. <laughs> Is this now going to be become- <laughs> It's Kevin Hall and then two models. <laughs> No, I didn't know that they lived. Oh, you I just, assumed they were dead. I just assumed they got caught and killed. They were like they were not back. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. they were cannibalized. Because we, right? we don't see that they actually were captured. So the rest of the movie is just Kevin trying to survive in the hills. <laughs> I was I was wondering what the hell was going to happen. Yeah, it's like, it is like Predator. This movie becomes Kevin's going to start covering himself in mud. <laughs> yeah, Kevin versus the cannibals. That's what it is now. That's yeah. a great title. That's what it should have been. Kevin yeah, and the cannibals. Kevin Kevin McAllister. <laughs> <laughs> Jungle Home Alone traps. Jungle Home Alone. <laughs> Where do you get a paint can? <laughs> By the way, will he make a few traps? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'd be interesting. Does he do it nonchalantly like he's got all the time in the world? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I think he trained under Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine Michael and Busey in a movie together? Oh, man. It'd make a great pairing, you know? Both wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. Uh, and so then, Kevin, <laughs> you do it. No, you do it. Eh, none of us will. <laughs> Let's sit this one out together, huh? <laughs> Women. <laughs> So then we watch Kevin. Okay, so this is where you see Kevin survives, and then he rolls down a big hill for some reason, right? Right. He does like, his own stunts. He's like, wee, yeah. and then he rolls he's down He's having fun. Uh, and then he, he beats lands. the banana cart. <laughs> <laughs> he watches from the bushes uh, as the cannibals bring Ava and the model back to their village. And we go to this village where we watch these children play with Ava, and they're like throwing dirt on Ava and Belinda and the girl who plays Ava kind of I don't think she got any direction in this shot because she's just kind of smiling like <laughs> she's, she's having fun too yeah she's like oh this is a nice trip <laughs> yeah, this cannibal HQ too like I expected them to pan over and there's Bugs Bunny thinking he's in a hot tub yeah and they're cutting carrots into it because the guy who comes out of a tent so as I write like shaman well yeah this whole this whole tribe looks like Ace Ventura movie <laughs> it's a little Ace Ventura they also to look a little bit like Parliament Funkadelic. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, I thought George Clinton all... was going to show up. So like a big shot, uh, like George Clinton comes out of a, a hut. <laughs> yeah, George Clinton, uh, with, Cousin It, whatever. With, yeah, <laughs> George Clinton cosplaying as Cousin It. Yeah, with <laughs> George Clinton as Cousin It comes out with a bog. <laughs> and he's like come on everybody come and get your hit you know <laughs> and all the soldiers kind of run up and they take a hit off of whatever they're smoking you know that brazilian blend <laughs> <laughs> and then so then we see like kevin take out a guard and choke him and this is one smart thing is kevin hall all-american hero pushes all the canoes out into the water except yeah. for one that is smart move term right <laughs> And so then we go back to the village, and then they're like, okay, uh, there hasn't been... This is going to be real tough, guys, but we got to get more nudity in this movie. So uh, let's get those girls undressed, eh? Let's make them look like they're out of a National Geographic, <laughs> am I right? Are we doing a jungle movie? Are we doing a jungle movie? <laughs> <laughs> you imagine him going up. He goes, all right, girls, you know, I told you we are in a jungle movie. And I said, uh, the dress, the costumes are going to be classy. I was talking about classy as in this issue of National Geographic. If you can see, they don't wear tops, so uh, they got to go. Also, the loincloths are very chic. It's uh, as I put jungle G-string. Why are you waving that $5 bill around? <laughs> <laughs> Supposed to uh, make anything happen around here. <laughs> so the outfit, which by the way, none of the other women in the tribe have to wear this. They they give him like a jungle g string. 
right? <laughs> or like a jungle loincloth shaped as a G string. It's very fashionable, by the way. So they're they're basically their bottoms are barely covered, and then their tops they don't have a top. They take off their tops and they give them like a headdress and bracelets. They give them bracelets. Yeah, gotta you know <laughs> they can't be naked out here for God. But then they give them headdresses with like shells hanging off them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because like a beat, like you're wearing basically like you're wearing a beaded curtain, right? <laughs> Gotta have that funk. Uh, So then they get them in these outfits, and they they basically make them go to this altar. And this is when the movie turns into a completely different... Like, now we've established that this is not the real world. Right. This is like the sacrifice stone. Because George Clinton comes over and pours some dirt on the ground. (laughs) And then tosses a ground bloomer. (laughs) He goes, we got the funk. And then it all goes up in flames. (laughs) We're going to put a little glide in our stride and dip in our hip and then trip on back to the mothership. (laughs) (laughs) And it's what I can only guess is like some sort of like dinosaur ghost man shows up. Yeah. They they summon dinosaur guy. (laughs) It's like a man in a dinosaur skull. Yeah. They summon the boss from that sitcom (laughs) dinosaurs. The guy who works at We Say So. It's a Sinclair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you mean George Jefferson. By the way. And Sherman Helmsley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sherman Helmsley showed up as the guy. <laughs> Bring me those girls. <laughs> so Sherman Helmsley makes these girls sit on a rock, right? Crime <laughs> bin all-star. This is, by the way, fucking amazing because he had dinosaur hands. Yeah, he had one, one dinosaur hand. He's wearing Hulk hands. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I'll give it to this. The movie actually does include some sort of dinosaur. <laughs> so this guy has like Hulk, Hulk dinosaur hands. And he like kind of <laughs> puts it on one of the women and drags it across her. And she's like, ah! And then all this fake blood yeah, pours like, out. Yeah, claws one of her tits. <laughs> and, okay, this is amazing. This is the second time you'll see Kevin Hall, All-American Hero, just kind of likes to peek out from behind rocks. <laughs> popping up like the toasty guy from Mortal Kombat. Like you just see his head pop up slowly and then he just goes back down. <laughs> and while the while uh, Sherman Helmsley is ripping this woman apart <laughs> and yelling about Sinclair. <laughs> Sinclair. He just sits behind a rock like making an M80. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> really like, slowly. By Sherman why? Helmsley is collecting the blood in like a plastic novelty <laughs> skull cup. Yeah. And they're going to do the Kali Ma. We're like, going to do the Kali Ma again. But he's so chill making that explosive. You said Hughes. He's going to make this explosive. Why? No reason. Because what he does is he throws the the explosion. It goes off. Then he just starts shooting everybody. And he lost like five shell cases. Man knows how to make an entrance. So why not? He's giving himself pyro like a wrestler. (laughs) But why not just start shooting? Yeah. That's got to be Kevin. (laughs) By God. He's not really a dinosaur, (laughs) damn it. By the way, this dinosaur god, he dies easy because Kevin just shoots him. He shoots George Clinton. He just starts shooting people from this rock. He shoots Bootsy Collins. He's taking them all out. Like, this is just a fucking, the Amazonian massacre. Like, he just takes out all these guys. He's like, fuck studying these tribes. They're all going to die. And he just starts shooting them. One nation everybody. under the ground. <laughs> Should just started coughing on them. I'm and from come America. Back in here. He's come from America, goddammit. Cheeseburgers, shotguns, death. You should have thrown that firework in the air. <laughs> <laughs> and saluted it. That's right, turned and pointed at it. That would have been great if he just pulled out an American flag and shoved it into the chief. Jammed it right in his body. <laughs> So, so this is now it's become Rambo versus the cannibals, okay? And Kevin Hall, all American hero, takes the girls. They make their escape. Uh, they're chased by their remaining tribe members in a very, 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 very slow chase. It really is. And we see the cannibals <laughs> coming around the side too. And for a second, I forgot we were in a river, and I thought we were in a lake because <laughs> the water's still, and they're just running around the edge. And but, but you say run, they don't run. The people trot. They're like it's almost as if they're like, all right, don't run too fast. The shot needs to last. And we don't want to set up the camera again. Because they just kind of all like trot <laughs> around. Yeah, like, they're, they're over there singing Bop Gun. I wouldn't even <laughs> say they're dancing. Sp- I, like, I wouldn't even see they're speed walking. They're yeah. kind of just like leisurely walking through the river going like, oh, did you see that duck? Oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, lost, lost another white girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so well, like, we'll get the next one. There's a new blue bus every day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hear one coming now. It's like the ice cream man coming in the neighborhood. 
<laughs> so then they make it to the river, and Kevin and the girls get in the remaining canoe, and they just kind of paddle off. And now we're on the Jungle River Cruise from Disneyland. <laughs> okay, now we're almost in a whole different movie. Almost, we're getting there. Because they row away. Uh, by the way, they're not very far. They're like within five feet of it. And then he puts his hand on Ava, and he goes, it's okay, you don't need to worry anymore. It's all over now. I'm like, well, not really, because they're all still right there. Like, literally right there, Kevin They're Hall. still shaking their fists. <laughs> And he's like, don't worry, I'll no-sell those arrows. Uh, <laughs> so basically, they all like, try to shoot arrows at him, but they don't hit him. And then they, they get that net. We cut to later, and the, the girls have finally negotiated in their contract that they don't have to be naked anymore. And they are wearing Kevin Hall All-American Heroes outfit. So he can go shirtless, like I said, for the ladies. But I, I, I love, because we've had the passage of time now, there's the implication that he let several hours go by before he thought, oh yeah, I'm wearing two shirts and they're naked. <laughs> you know, he's like, oh shit, that's right. I'm sorry. I almost think, like, you know how, did you ever hear with that movie Wild Things? where mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon demanded that he get to show his dick in that movie. Yeah. Because he was like, if if Matt Dillon gets to have a three-way, I get to show my penis, right? And they're like, all right, whatever. He loves showing his dick. <laughs> but, Remember Hollow Man? <laughs> I imagine Michael Sopkin was like, hey, they get to be topless. How about me, huh? I got my fans. I got to I gotta give something for the ladies. sopkin has got some sweet <laughs> nips. He's like, how come they get to be topless? How come no cannibal got to capture me and I get to be topless? And like, all right, fine, Michael. You can be topless for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Go ahead. He's like, damn right I do. <laughs> He's like, all right. So now he gets to show off his goods. And we cut, okay, so then they go to like a small part of the river and then like these nets come up and you're like, oh no, they're going to get captured. This is where Kevin from Home Alone showed up. But don't worry, Kevin Hall, all-American hero, stands up, shoots one of them with a shotgun. and then. Sh- shoots the chief right from like what are we talking 30 feet away something like with that a shotgun, with a shotgun by the way this must be dolomite shotgun <laughs> yeah and then he shoots the net and it just breaks apart perfect aim by the way and then it's they amazing. just they just row on and they're like kevin are they gonna follow us and he's like no i killed the chief i think it's good i think we're good guys movie over it's like you kill the head vampire the rest of the vampires are done and then I, this is when I look at it, I'm like, okay, there's 20 minutes left in this movie. We're, we're an hour in. What the hell are we going to do for 20 minutes? Row the boat. Okay. <laughs> that would be, I would love that. Guys, was, nothing happens and they're just cruising in a boat. <laughs> Time to start the third movie. We take <laughs> ready for part three of our triple feature. <laughs> we, we, ta- we take What the, is his roots? We take the canoe ashore, right? And Kevin takes out a knife and he's like, I'm going to go get us something to eat. Okay. Uh, and then Ava's like, let me come with you. And this is great, by the way. Oh, that's At that point, I have in my notes, I'm like, are they really just going to leave Belinda at the boat? Yeah, she's wondering that too, because they zoom in on her face. She's like, has this terrified look like, please don't leave me here. Yeah, she's about to be like, and I'm going to come to... They're already gone. <laughs> she's like, so the crew is walking away. And she's like, wait, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. There's, there's guys with spears and shit. We can't... I was like, I hope nothing happens to her. I hope she's all right. <laughs> so now with less than 20 minutes left in the movie, we see Kevin and Ava fall in love. Yeah. Yeah, because why not? We got to kill some time now. They're supposed to go get something to eat, but then they're like, well. Oh, he's getting something to eat. Yeah, let's eat each other, huh? Yeah. Eh? <laughs> All these thoughts of cannibals makes me want to. <laughs> okay, so this is what I say. They attempt to fuck in the mud, and I write, you think that the near rape and death at the hands of cannibals would make Ava a little bit not in the mood. Not so. She's ready to go. Nah, she's down. In the goddamn mud of the Amazon. She's like, take me now, you Kevin know, Hall, the, American hero. The blood's fill been me flowing. With, fill me with that cheeseburger. God. <laughs> with that foot long. Salute these fireworks. <laughs> take out that Dodger dog. Let's do this. There you go. <laughs> How American. <laughs> So he lays her down on the on the ground. They're just gonna they're just gonna fuck. Yeah, he's gonna stick that Dodger dog in. And as he's like looking longingly into her eyes and getting ready, he sees something behind her. <laughs> it's a giant footprint. Okay, <laughs> I, I fucking lost it at this point. <laughs> we are on Skull Island. They're about to have sex in the Amazonian mud, mud, mind you. But then that. <laughs> that old bone collector in him comes out again. <laughs> and instead of smuggling a bone, he notices a bone. And he goes, oh my God! And puts his hand in a fucking dinosaur footprint. Like a fresh one. Okay, and, and this is... I fucking lost it at this point. And I said, okay. <laughs> there are fresh tracks for a dinosaur. Fresh tracks. It's 65 million year old fresh tracks 
in the Amazon jungle. The Amazon jungle, which is known for eating the ground alive in the matter of like a year. If you left something on the ground, you would never be able to find it again. There are civilizations that are lost in the Amazon because they, they just got eaten by the jungle hundreds of years ago. But a 65 million year old footprint, like a Bigfoot footprint, I just so stays excited. right there. I was like, that's how we're filling out the end of this movie? I thought we are getting dinosaurs. We're getting the fucking carnosaur showing up in, in the jungle. Nope. This no. is supposed to be a fucking fossilized footprint. Yeah. Uh, as uh, <laughs> as Kevin as Kevin Hall, All American Hero, says, that's prehistory right there. <laughs> I'm like, I th- I'm like, just fuck you, movie. Like, this is insane that what we're supposed letdown. to believe this. They're like, well, you see Bigfoot footprints. It's the same thing, right? I mean, <laughs> dinosaurs got to walk somewhere. But then we cut to two feet, which at first I thought was a dinosaur foot. Because I was like, well, we've seen a man with a dinosaur hand. We've seen Sherman Helmsley as a dinosaur. <laughs> so I thought, well, we must. This is make- probably Carl. Yeah, here we go, right? This or at is- least Robbie. <laughs> yeah, this is the Seclair family, a.k.a. the Winslows, just as dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. That's all it was. But they're two slaves. Like, we pan up from their feet to see that there's two slaves. And they're like, can you help us? And I write, well, this movie changed quickly. It had to. Because It's a different movie. I write my notes, so if you were wondering where we would go with the last 20 minutes with no cannibals, well, we now have a white slaver. So a man named China. China? Okay. China (laughs) walks up, right? So at this point, Bobby, let's call him China, because that's what every character, including Kevin Hall and everybody else, are going to call him. Okay. China walks up and he says, he has a gun, right? And he says, don't worry about them. They're just a bunch of slaves. Now, (laughs) Now, why would a couple of youngsters like you be doing around here? And one of his goons in the background has a sombrero, and I was at this point convinced Busey was going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> you heard, but horn, like, <laughs> hey, cabron. <laughs> hey, cabron. So then Kevin tells him, he's, he basically summarizes the movie and then says, uh, China goes, China goes, civilization's about an hour walk from here, but you're both welcome to stay here. And Kevin politely declines. Now let's remember that, guys. He says, it's an hour walk from here mm-hmm. yeah so how long would like a car take you think well if it's an hour walk you can get there in what 10 minutes yeah let's I, remember that i okay? think he was lying probably he, he also asks if this is a friend of his when he sees eva yeah and he asks an intimate friend <laughs> to which kevin hall american hero says fatty that's my business <laughs> uh then another guy comes up and says china look what i found and he's dragging up belinda right glad to see her <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was She's worried okay. about her. So we go back to the slave camp, right? And Kevin and Ava and the model are all, okay, Belinda, are all brought to the slaver camp, right? Which is a big set, by the way. Yeah, and, and some ugly women. <laughs> <They're>, they they <laughs> purposely put in these really ugly people and saying, you're going to have a good time. But they're VOing it all. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think that's what was going on. <laughs> yeah, like, they're like, yeah, tell them they're going to have a good time. <laughs> it was really weird. Yeah, there's like a lady with missing teeth and like mud all over her face. She's like, you're going to have a great time. Trust me. I'm having a time of my life. <laughs> you're going to love it here. And they, okay, basically they put those slaves that asked for help in a bamboo cage, like the one from Raw Force. Yeah, I, I, I was at this point like, horse for Jade. We're doing it. <laughs> this is a Raw Force sequel. And Kevin asks, he goes, prequel. Hey, can I get these girls some clothes? And China's like, why? I like what they're wearing. That's a uh, jungle G-string. That's a new style around here, son. That's Lulu, Lululemon fresh. <laughs> <laughs> and then China's like, hey, you know what? It gets real boring around here. We should really hang out sometime, right? And then he has some guy hit Kevin Hall in the back of the head, and he gets knocked out. Basically, we cut to later. Kevin wakes up and he's tied in like a pig pen, right? With these pigs. He's still shirtless. Nobody can get a shirt anymore. Uh, and everyone's running out of a mind. And like, so he wakes up to these guys running out of a mind and they like dynamite it. And I'm just like, what What the hell is going on? There's like, we're 15 minutes left in this movie. What is going on? And this has nothing to do with the previous movie. Like but we have introduced a new character, like a new bad guy. A new storyline, a new everything. Like they, they, they plotted out a trilogy of films and they only got the funding for one movie <laughs> it's like you you want to 
like the original cut of Dinosaur Valley is a good three, four hours, and they're just like, yeah, this is going to be a real epic. They're like, oh yeah, oh no, we paid for eighty minutes, so uh, you got to. We thought we were doing go. a season of a TV show. <laughs> I mean, this is like a Christopher Nolan Batman. You know, you kill the first villain, and then we get the second movie that starts up. Yeah, there was originally like, supposed to be dialogue for the dinosaur guy. <laughs> like, does anybody even remember that after the Joker, you have to go through all the Two Face? Yeah. Like, everybody forgets that part of the movie, you know what boring. I mean? Because it's boring. Because all of a sudden, they're like, oh, no, there's an hour left. None of that series holds up, man. <laughs> Heath Ledger's cool and all, but, like, those movies do not hold up. Just like, if you watch Batman Begins, right? You see this whole movie with Scarecrow, and you're like, oh, that was cool. And then all of a sudden, Liam Neeson shows up, and you're like, wait, where, I'm sorry, where? there's another movie starting right now? Like, a whole nother movie begins as... Like, I don't need this. Batman Begins again as the second movie begins. Go watch the last one where he gets thrown in that pit in Egypt or whatever and then somehow shows up in Gotham in an hour. Like infiltrates Gotham City that's yeah. under a complete quarantine. How? Without his bat shit. He's still... With a broken back. He's Batman. Batman. Do it Batman. He's fucking Batman. That's Batman. why. They should have had Michael Sepp. Uh, it's really difficult to watch a second time. The third or, one especially. Yeah, the third one. Really I, just, I hated it the first time I watched it. It was worse the second. So uh, you haven't seen a yeah, Dunkirk speaking yet, of, yet, Speaking of South no. Americans too, the fact that they turned Bane into Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, so if you haven't seen Dunkirk yet, Tom Hardy's in that movie. Oh, does and he have a line? Is he, he doing the voice? No, okay, so he plays a pilot, and he has a mask on his face the whole movie, and I was like, do you think next time that Christopher Nolan calls him, he goes, look, Chris, I'll be in the movie, but can I please can I please show my face for the movie, or do I got to be under another fucking mask? They're going to announce, like, Christopher Nolan's rebooting Mortal Kombat, and Tom Hardy's like, don't fucking call He's me. Like, I, he, Sub-Zero. He <laughs> just, <laughs> like, damn it! He, blocked, he just blocks the number. He's like, nope, yeah. nope, 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 nope. This number has been disconnected. <laughs> Yeah, he wears a mask the whole movie until the very end you see his face. And he doesn't even get a line. It's pretty amazing. Great movie, though. It was, re- it was really good. What happens if we go back to Dunkirk? It would be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> For you. That's the, you ruin the whole twist, you know. At oh, the end of the movie, all of a sudden, he comes out and he goes... He was like, you can't ruin the twist of a historical film. <laughs> you thought it was Hitler. <laughs> See, you just adopted Dunkirk. I was born into it. <laughs> Hitler, Hitler produces his newest genetic experiment, Bane. The Dark Reich. <laughs> the Dark Reich. <laughs> oh, there's a YouTube short story I've ever heard one. <laughs> Bane is the Ubermensch. <laughs> so, so basically, this movie has now become... <laughs> A white slaver ring where they've captured Kevin and the models. We get this thing, right? They're all captured by these white slavers named China. Nope, never mind. For the rest of the movie, everybody's going to call him China. China. They totally changed the pronunciation of his name. It's like if somebody says GIF and then another person comes in and says GIF and then everybody's like, well, I guess that's how you say it. So now I'm it's say it. Yeah, now I got to say it like that for the rest of the day. It's just they're using different VOs each day. <laughs> just different people off the street doing the same voices. <laughs> Depending on where they're from, they, yeah. see, they see it on the script and they're like, China. Because everybody starts calling him China and I'm just like, at some point I wanted him to turn around and go, it's China. The name is China. You know, this is exactly why Vince McMahon spelled it with a Y (laughs) just to avoid this bullshit (laughs) so then this is great Uh, basically so Kevin's with those pigs right and (laughs) Cheetah China comes up and he he goes up to him with a cup of water right and Kevin pig filled water no no he has nice water oh that he was drinking because Kevin says you know what you are you're a fat smelly evil bastard the delivery is great on that too All right, that's telling him huh Kevin you give it to him that's how America does it baby (laughs) I wish he would have thrown in some more patriotism, you know? He'd have been like, you know what you are, China? You're a real fat, smelly, evil, non-American bastard. You commie <laughs> bastard. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know what your politics are in this shithole. But you're probably a socialist. <laughs> <laughs> You live in below America. That's what we call it up in North America. The trash America. That's right. The south one. We call this (laughs) toilet America. Yeah. I bet your toilets flush the other way down here, you fucking loser. Because everything's all ass backwards. (laughs) Not like the US of A. The water runs up. Water runs uphill. The toilets flush the other way. If you watch Anaconda, the waterfall does travel (laughs) up. Yes, I have seen that. It's great. <laughs> I love that movie, by the way. John Voight is a Cuban. Thank you. And uh, should have been that should have been a series. <laughs> All right. Now there's 10 minutes left of this movie. We have three different movies going on. 
This is something. I'm sure as hell not bored. That's the biggest thing with these exploitation movies, especially cannibal movies. At some point, they just start dragging on. But this movie doesn't even give you time. Every five seconds, something's happening and the movie's changing. And this is why we love these kinds of movies. You can't predict what's going to happen scene by scene because it can take a left turn out of nowhere. If you had told me in the beginning of this movie when we see a man driving up in in a truck eating bananas that we would somehow get into a white slaver ring by the end of this? I... Not in a million years would I have guessed it, but I love it. Uh, so China, okay. So Run by get- some guy who looks like a high school football coach <laughs> <laughs> and a leather wrist cuff. Uh, so China gets all mad, by the way. Oh, by the way, the guy who plays China, he now, he's been in a bunch of movies, and he also works for the sound department. He does music, uh, including uh, one of the songs on the soundtrack for City of God. Really? Yeah. So this man, uh, he's an interesting man. Sticking with Brazil. Uh, so China, he gets all upset about that smelly evil bastard line, and he pours out the good water, and then he gets a mug full of pig water, and he goes like, you want to drink now, huh? Huh? <laughs> and right now. He like slops it all over Kevin's face. He's like, yeah, now you're dirty. Now your shirt's off and you're dirty. You like that, ladies? Now this is where Kevin gets pig powers. Actually, he kind of, not Not this isn't really where it happens, but well, actually no, so now that I think about it, he does get pig later, powers yeah. later. No, he does though. He, okay, so I assume that's how he got the pig powers. Much like Spider-Man got spider powers. Exactly. He got splashed with pig water and now he can talk to the pigs. Well, yeah, he got splashed and then he got bit. Yeah, yeah. okay, so he does have blood and that's when he realizes that the pigs like blood because it bites them. But China also says, he's like, China, can't you let me out of here? Can't you let the girls out at least? And he's like, no, because I'm mining illegally. And if anybody found out, then I would be in trouble. Right? So why keep any of them alive? Just shoot well, them all. I mean, why keep Kevin Hall, All-American Hero, alive? Yeah, I mean, he obviously bastard. wants the, the women. Well, you do need pig food, so... Don't ever trust a man that keeps a pig farm. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the, this bamboo cell, right? Where the Ava and the model are, uh, Belinda. And this, like, assistant lady to China. I call him the madam. To, the madam for China comes in. She's like, you guys are really going to love it, okay? Uh <laughs> Ava, let me just tell you something. He's going to screw your ass right into the ground, and that's only the beginning. Then comes dessert. Me. (laughs) And then she looks at Belinda, right? And she's like, basically she says, hey, look, Belinda, I'll help you get out of here, right? Huh? Just do what I say. And then we have to watch for a while as she fondle rapes. Belinda. She like licks her chest wound at one point. But yeah, Belinda I'm like, to, ow. Belinda starts to be okay with it. Well, well she's, she's to save agreeing herself. to the terms. Yeah, so she agrees. If you're good to mama, she'll be good to you, yeah. basically, is what we're getting at here. It's Stockholm Syndrome has taken effect at this point. I feel She's like just he, like, well, I'm just going to go along with the rapist. Especially with the, the wound licking. I, I feel like at this point, even Mr. Crown would be like, yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, <whoa. laughs> like, Wait a minute. <laughs> that looks like it hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm getting a little hard than soft. <laughs> By the way, did you notice how, uh, because in the beginning of the movie, Kevin Hall got beat up, and then by the next morning, all his bruises and everything were gone? He's like Logan. Yeah. (laughs) Indestructible, this man. Uh, So then China and the workers, right? Um, Basically, he gets a radio call. This is great. He gets a radio call, and he's like, hey, the mining's going great. Yeah. Are you still bringing that helicopter with all those supplies? Yeah, bring some brandy for the boys. You know, we're having a good time. Uh, (laughs) we We got a lot of great rocks. And I, I'm just wondering, like, hmm, I wonder what's going on here. Uh, but apparently a, a helicopter is going to arrive tomorrow with supplies, right? Yep. And this is when I do write, I said, okay, again, if this is an hour walk from civilization, it seems like it would be easy to get supplies in here if you, if you had a road or something. Like, It's not an hour's walk. <laughs> he was lying. Okay. He get, the, the helicopter. Because I write, you know, my commute to work's much longer than just uh, getting, to, getting into town here. <laughs> As we've established about men who have pig farms. <laughs> So the assistant lady lets the model out of the cell, right, in front of China. Like, basically, she's like, okay, uh, you can go run away now. Well, she tells him, to they're, they're eating lunch. No one will see you. Even though, okay, but He's as our eye is lean view. China's staring right at her as the madam lets her out and goes, go, he won't find you. Like, you think Belinda would be like, no, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, because I swear their eyes meet. Yeah. He's, he's smiling. He practically waves at her. <laughs> and then she, again, nobody ever runs. She just kind of trots out. And then he goes, oh, target practice. And China just starts shooting her in the back. <coughs> she takes like, and she won't die. She no. takes like seven shots. 
<laughs> and she's still crawling and everything. Like, it turns out Belinda's tougher than Kevin. And by the way, do you even see Belinda actually die? Yeah, she crawls to her, and then as she's crawling, she collapses, and that's when she she's finally oh, okay. gives in. This is when I wrote, they keep calling her Belinda. This is news to me. <laughs> I didn't, even realize that, I didn't have her name written down in my notes until this scene. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Belinda? Huh. No wonder no one says it. And this is what I wrote. Also, now everybody calls him China, even though everybody was calling him China for the past 10 minutes. And I'm like, <laughs> what the what the hell is going on? Uh, and then China, Ch- China, China brings Ava into a hut and Kevin yells, China, I'm going to kill you. I really believe him. Uh, and then so basically we see like Gina pushes Ava to the ground and he goes, now the fun's going to start. And then she kicks him in the nuts. They fight around for a while. It's a great nut shot. Uh, he gets her clothes off. Uh, and then we cut to later at night. Yeah. I mean, tastefully, we have cut away. We're doing that thing again like we did in, so you say in Bulletproof <laughs> where we're, it's like we, we need to rape this girl to show you that it's affecting our male hero. Yeah. Because we keep cutting over to Kevin, who's just like, oh. But, like, I, I thought you were going to say it's tasteful because he waits until night. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. like, who rapes in the day? Come on. I look mean, at it's, me. It's, we're in the ju- It's hot. <laughs> it's a deleted scene. Sheena goes, what, what are we doing? <laughs> it's four o'clock in the afternoon. We haven't even eaten dinner yet. I mean, come on. I got to let What kind of host would I be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not every day I get guests, you know. <laughs> the jungle gets to you, okay? Let's take a break. You know, we'll think it over. Let's let's have some food. I got some brandy coming. Yeah, <laughs> got some brandy. You know. We can make a night of it. <laughs> I got this new record, this world music record. Cut. You want to hear it? <laughs> <laughs> so they settle in before he rapes. Like, they're just going to have a little bit of a little bit of a nice afternoon. Uh, so now it's night, uh, and we cut, we cut between shots of Ava being raped, and Kevin, like, kind of, he's like, no, she... Get raped. Now, this is interesting. It's it's almost like when Superman's about to fly in the new Superman movies because, like, his knuckles start kind of digging into the dirt a little bit, all slow. And this is what I mean by he got his pig powers. It seems to attract the pigs that he's doing that. Well, I think it's supposed to be because he's bleeding. Because earlier the pig yeah. bit him because of the blood. Yeah. So it's like he made his wrists bleed so the pigs would eat through the... Right. But I would like to think, like, uh, it would be amazing if this movie ended with Kevin having his own pig army. It, he's like Pig Willard. <laughs> so yeah. here's here's my question on this whole <laughs> He's rope. Wilbur. Yeah, this whole rope and pig thing. They have metal shackles for all of the slaves. You don't and, think they have one extra well, set? They, they, they ran ropes. out, you know. Come on, it's hard to get stuff out in the jungle, Hughes. As you said, it's not really an hour away. Kill one of the slaves and take theirs. <laughs> yeah, we need some new shackles. Kill that slave. <laughs> Okay, so Kevin breaks out, right? And then all the slaves watch in anticipation of what he's going to do next, which is cut to day. Yeah, he just disappeared. He there is a off. cut scene. And this is what I write in my notes. We cut to day? Kevin had the perfect opportunity with all the workers asleep in China mid-rape to get the jump on him. Like, he could have went into that hut and easily taken could've him out. this movie right now. There yeah. was the knife that he left on the outside of his door. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when he stabbed the knife as he walked into his hut to go rape? Yeah. All Kevin had to do was walk in, grab the knife, open the door silently, and kill him. And, just, all and gut the, him like a piranha. Had yeah. Been. All the workers are gone. The yeah. only people left is the chained up slaves and him raping a, a woman in a hut. Even the madam's gone. Yeah, everybody's gone. But he's like, no, I'm just going to escape myself. Like, fuck her. And he goes out. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, our hero, Kevin Hall, all-American hero, just disappears for a couple hours. And then it's the daytime, and they wake up. They're like, hey, where's that guy? Huh? What's amazing in this point is uh, China China doesn't ask the slave sitting there what happened. Yeah, no. he just walks out. He's like, oh, my God, the guy's gone. He can be like, I'm going to shoot one of you each minute until you guys tell me what happened. Yeah, they would have told him. In a heartbeat. They don't care about Kevin. He left them. But he also threw in Ava into the cage. Yeah, he's like, this is your fault. And he puts her in the bamboo cage. And he's like, we're in Javi prison. Yeah, he's like, we're going to weigh you. I mean, we'll see how much Jade you're worth. All right. And so they got Colonel Sanders coming on the next plane. (laughs) All of a sudden, we see some mystery spear come through the air. (laughs) <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty great. And it lands near Cheetah China 
And then we see All-American Hero Kevin Hall comes out with, like, a bunch of spears. So, um, okay, did he spend all his night making spears? I think that's yes. what happened. Or did he go back to the cannibals, kill all of them, and take all their, all their spears? And he's like, I need these more than you do. <laughs> that's the deleted scene is him working his way through the cannibals. Just now, one by one at night, he's slitting cannibals' throats like like it's gator bait. Like he's going in and just killing them one by one. And Chino China asks him when he sees him, why'd you come back here, you idiot? And you know what? Good point. <laughs> so, like, the people dumb it are like, this fucking guy, why'd he even come back? <laughs> like, they, they cut to the slaves the and they're all just shaking their heads <laughs> like, like this moron. <laughs> Mr. Crouch is like, I would have left the broad. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> he already fucked it in the mud. I mean, like, come on. You escaped under cover of darkness. There's a boat at the river. <laughs> Like, get back to the boat and leave. Just leave her. <laughs> Fuck it. I'll take my chance with the cannibals, you know? They're looking for a new lead singer anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I can put on the Triceratops mask. <laughs> oh, Cheetah China calls him an idiot. And he's like, try and shoot me, Cheetah. And then he takes out the gun and from what I see, shoots him. It ricochets off one of the spears. Which and leads me to believe that the plan was to just <laughs> let him shoot him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> He comes out holding 19 spears in his arms. Yeah. And he goes... Like he's on supermarket sweep. <laughs> he goes, shoot me, Cheetah. And then he does and barely misses. Why does China, China, whatever, have only six bullets? Why can't he reload? Okay, that, that's what I was... So now they get a chase around, <laughs> around the camp where Kevin's like... It's like Linda Blair in the end of Savage Streets. She's just like, you're going to find me. You're going to find me. He's just like yeah. going around. He's taunting him like the shadow. Because <laughs> it's just a voice coming from somewhere. Like, <laughs> He's got like a tape player with his voice going like, you've only got five shots left, China, <laughs> China. Five shots left, China. Five shots left. And then he shoots him again. Four shots. Three shots. It's like the fucking guy at the end of Speed 2, you know, who's like, 12 knots, 11 knots. Like, he's just... <laughs> Two knots, but now they've gone. They've gone like a hundred feet into the village. One knot, another three hundred feet. <laughs> it's like, why? Why are you still li- telling? Just tell us when it stops. Like, we'll figure it out. I wish somebody said, like, can somebody help us? And then Hines comes up and just snaps up the back. He was making too much noise. <laughs> okay. By the way, wouldn't this have been the perfect opportunity for Colonel Hines to come back? Yes. With a bunch of arrows sticking out of him. Like, what if Kevin Hall comes out with all the spears and just like, come and shoot? Shoot me, China, and then China tries to shoot him, and Heinz comes up behind Kevin, and he goes, "Don't worry, I got it." Just Jason some right. <laughs> no, it should have been uh, Marilyn Marilyn Monroe come out, <laughs> covered in mud, covered in mud, and she kills him. Oh, imagine if she was in the slave cage. They come into the <laughs> they come into the slave town, and she's like, "Oh, look who it is, small dick Kevin Hall, coming oh. here." Oh, the big American <laughs> hero coming back. The boss tried to fuck me, but he couldn't get it out. <laughs> Oh, here's Gina. Hmm. He lays heavy, but he doesn't lay deep. (laughs) While you were busy running around the jungle, he had his way with me. I wasn't impressed. (laughs) (laughs) This would have been a great opportunity to bring back... (laughs) Bring back all our cast. Oh, the whole cast comes <laughs> The whole back. cast shows up. <laughs> Even the professor's there. I'm okay. Oh, you found you found my wife's daughter. Oh, great. Cameraman with a bone leg. <laughs> the photographer's, around. The photographer's just trying to fix his camera with rock. Oh, and I wouldn't have been shocked at this point in the movie. I'm like, yeah, of well, course that happened. Like the Star Wars ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is amazing. So they, they fucking run around for a while, right? And then, like... Basically, Kevin. So basically, they're fighting, and he just keeps telling. He keeps. Pull, he's basically pulling the the colonel's wife. Yeah. Like he's <laughs> like, "Hey, you only got one shot left, you small dick motherfucker," and basically he uses up all his bullets until he's only got one shot left. Kevin Hall, all American hero, gives him that all good American fastball right to the chest with one of those spears. Well, no, before that. No, 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 no. You're leaving you, something out. You skipped the... Uh, this the, is significant. There's the one shot left that, that China has. Oh, my God. You're and right. he throws a bag he, at him. He throws a bag <laughs> with a rattlesnake. Okay, wait. Hold on. I do have a quote, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, okay, when he throws that bag, hold on, this because this is amazing. He gives him the old Jake the Snake, <laughs> throws the green bag into him. Okay, when he only has one shot left, Kevin ducks behind a rock, which also, by the way, he did get shot in the leg. Yeah, he So did, all yeah. of this taunting was, he did end up getting a bullet to the fucking leg. And honestly, at trouble. this point, he deserved it. Yeah, he did. And then he says, he gets behind this rock when he has one shot left, and he goes, try this one, sucker, and throws a bag. And when he threw the bag, I was like, this is full of more homemade 
explosives. I thought it was the dynamite from the yeah. the yeah right the absolutely cave. from the from the mining. That's where he ran off to. Yeah, no, he spent all night. He went and caught a <laughs> rattlesnake. Yeah, so not only did in he in the go, jungle, he went and killed every goddamn cannibal in the Congo. <laughs> <laughs> he collected every spear <laughs> to fucking get all their spears. He went and he hunted all night for a snake. Okay, <laughs> he stuffed a snake in a bag. He was wiggling himself on the ground. He's like, to catch the snake, you gotta be the snake. And he's wiggling around. <laughs> he's going. <laughs> Finally, gets a snake in a bag. Also, by the way, he didn't have a bag, so he came back to the camp to get a bag to then go get the it snake. It was a busy night, <laughs> and the slaves were watching the whole thing, just like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> just watch it. Like, Can you please just that lever right there, sir? Like you could just, just get us one, out of here. We, we'll, we'll help you collect spears. <laughs> yeah, you get you, kill cannibals. As he's, great. As he's, he's got an arm full of spears. They're like you know, you don't have to carry those by yourself. We don't like this guy either. <laughs> you know, we we make those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we we could. You want a spear? We'll get you a spear. Dude, I we mean. got a whole pile back here. You didn't have to go kill those cannibals. <laughs> That was my so, family. He throws this. I got nowhere to go home to now. He throws this bag with a snake in it. It's either he went looking for a snake all night, or he kept that snake from earlier in the movie and just shoved it in his pocket. So it was a, a literal trouser snake <laughs> that he kept for the whole movie, just for this one occasion, where he throws it next to him. And this is the stupidest fucking. What are you gonna do? Shoot me or shoot? The shoot. snake. This is like instead of it, like oh, it's a it's a copy of a person. You know what I mean? Like it's the old the old doppelganger situation. <laughs> which one's the snake? He's like, which one's me? Are you gonna shoot me or are you gonna shoot a snake? Which is funny because I think that uh, China China could have slowly stepped away from the snake That's what and I then shot Kevin. <laughs> yeah, it was like the, if he if he sh- if he fires the, sh- the gun, the snake's gonna attack him. If he shoots the snake, the snake dies and he's okay. Or he I could, don't know where well, they got this. Like they didn't set this up. Oh, the launch is hey uh, I could stand up <laughs> like I could just literally maybe just step to the side and the snake will no longer bite me uh, and I'll shoot you Kevin but no he shoots the head off a snake yep. like he blows the head off a fucking snake it's an snake. amazing shot it's like the it's like the cow and the and cut and the cow absolutely side. for all his trouble he gets a sp- like I said an all American fastball spear to the chest oh it's beautiful there's no curve on that throw baby that's perfect a full- spiral <laughs> It's a Joe full Montana. Tom Brady spiral <laughs> right to the chest. Joe Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hall throws it, and Joe Montana just comes up behind him with a hand on the shoulder. He goes, nothing but spiral, my right. son. Perf- then- tight. High and tight, Kevin. Great. And then Mean Joe gives him his jersey. <laughs> <laughs> cuts, cuts to a flashback. He goes, just like I taught you, Kevin. Just like right. I taught you. We needed that flashback to Joe Montana teaching him how to throw. <laughs> he goes, you know, Kevin, one day you could be a, a quarterback for the 49ers. He goes, you really think so, Joe? No, you know what, Joe? I really want to collect bones. <laughs> No, they go, we cut to the NFL draft, and with the first pick, the Steelers pick Kevin Hall. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the hat. And he comes up and he goes, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm not going to be playing football this year. I'm going to go collect and smuggle bones. <laughs> you do it, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joe Montana throws him his jersey. <laughs> Spiral. Perfect spiral. Perfect spiral. Just remember, Kevin, when you're in the jungle with a bunch of cannibals, never forget the, <laughs> the throwing motion. <laughs> so anyways, this, <laughs> basically, the movie's not over. No. Because it's never this, over. <laughs> by the way, this gets so bad. Again, so this is our hero, guys. Remember this. He lets out all the slaves. Yeah, okay? he let the slaves go. But Ava's sitting in that bamboo cage yelling at him. She's yelling at him. She says... What the fuck are you doing? Save me. Kevin, get me down from this fucking cage. Let me down. Well, this is when he ran and collected the TNT first. Yeah, he's running around the camp. By the way, well, he's kind of hobbling because he didn't get shot yeah. in the leg, right? And he's putting dynamite in like every pocket. He's got it down his pants. He's just... And even the slaves are watching. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck's this guy doing? And there's a voiceover going. He goes like, what are you complaining for? That's the best seat in the house? Yeah, he's like, this is the best place to see the show from, is what he says. He's gone full boozy at this point. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> then he frees all the slaves, right? So he he puts on that fucking top hat and he goes, call me Lincoln, boys. And he frees all the slaves. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is my favorite part of the whole movie. You think he's being a good guy and freeing all those slaves. Nope. They all run out and all the people that work in this fucking mine see the slaves running out. And gun and them down. They fucking kill all of them. They lay. He freed the slaves as a fucking diversion. To get them to come into the village. To draw the other guys. I mean, 
he basically fed him to a meat grinder. And he's like, yep, that's America, boys. With, and then he put his feet up and just said, okay, yeah, I'm going to relax did. now. He kicked back with his feet up. My job the, is done. Okay. While the non-white people died on the ground. How American. <laughs> Okay. Still not free to Ava. She is in the cage screaming at him, going, You are a male chauvinist. She's pig. calling him everything. You will what the fuck is wrong with you? Get me out of this goddamn cage. He's got his feet up smoking a cigarette. Where'd that come from? And he's just laughing and smiling and he's like, hey, hey, hey. The workers come back and I believe the line is something like, Hey, wait, everybody's dead. Oh, there's that girl. Let's shoot her. Yeah, and they start shooting and her. They start shooting her. And then Kevin nonchalantly puts up his bullet ridden leg, shoves it down onto a dynamite plunger, and then everybody blows up. And then the bamboo falls like it's the end of the fucking mousetrap board game. Uh, I was double there. It was the end of double there. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you remember uh, Mayara, the girl who was uh, licking the wounds and all that? When he frees the slaves, he looks at her and goes, you get out of here too. And she just runs yeah, away. Yeah. Like, she's one of the bad guys, you moron. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, he was feeding her to a meat grinder. So. <laughs> well, she didn't get gunned down. She worked with those guys. Oh, well, she that's just, true. She escaped she's into like, the jungle. Yeah, it's all, it's all that Kevin guy. <laughs> he's, he's like, I don't care what you do. Get out of here. She seems like a good girl. She had a good heart, you know. She, she tried loved, to try to help Belinda. She tried to help. Belinda. Yeah, honestly, honestly, she did better than Kevin did. Yeah, honestly, yeah, really. I mean, that's, where do you think Kevin learned that whole like free the slaves so they get shot thing? Uh, so then Ava runs out of the cage and she's all pissed at him. And he goes, "Are you still mad at me? Come on, give me a little kiss." Because you know that's what you need to do to a rape victim, like yeah. the day after. <laughs> Insist upon physical affection. Give me a kiss. Why don't we go? You. Why you don't we go it. back in that? T- why don't we go back in that hut and make it right? Huh? Let's make it consensual this time. You up for it, Ava? Let's, Let's turn go. a bad memory into a like, oh, it's an okay memory. <laughs> Nothing like return to the scene of the crime, making it nice. You know. Huh? Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so American then, hero, Kevin Hall. Okay, then the helicopter lands and a shirtless man with jeans comes out. <laughs> a shirtless fat guy <laughs> shows up. Okay. The real hero of this movie. Randy By the way, from uh, uh, Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, tell me. Yeah, it is. It's like Brazilian <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Tell me, how big was this helicopter this man's bringing all the supplies in? A uh, two-person kit? Yeah, it's the yeah. Batcopter. There's no fucking supplies the in this thing. Batcopter. The 66 Batcopter you, you shows e- up. You couldn't even bring a fucking day bag in this thing. The <laughs> helicopter and Annie was larger. You could barely fit the snake in a bag. <laughs> the, he- the helicopter and Annie fit more people. Yeah. <laughs> So, so he comes out and the shirtless man runs out and he goes like, oh, what happened here? Everybody's dead. Cheetah. Oh, my God. My good friend. And then he looks back at the copters. It's taking and off. they're like, sucker. <laughs> and then he's to stop the helicopter. He's just throwing rocks at it. Kevin Hall opens the door to the helicopter, looks down at him, and he says, I'll pick you up on my next trip with the police. Oh. <laughs> Then they get in the air. Ava looks at him and she goes, you really know how to fly a helicopter, Kevin? And he says, no, but I'm a quick learner. And I'm like, that's not how it works. But then this is amazing. She, he goes, you know what will make you feel better? My high club. No, not yet. You, go, oh. you know what will make you feel better? Look down under there under your seat. All right, everybody. Look under your seats. <laughs> Take out that box. She takes out this box. She puts it on her lap. She opens it. And what's in that box, Chris? Beautiful, cold, green, jade. Yeah. Jade. 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 Whore jade. Now, if you've listened to our Raw Force episode, you know about the whores for jade trade. Bamboo cages, slaves. Jungles. Jungles. Jade. Cannibals. Cannibals. Does this movie... I think we have a shared universe. It and must I, exist in the Raw Force universe. The last note I have for this movie, <laughs> as the credits roll on the movie, in all caps I wrote, Next Stop, Warrior's <laughs> Island. <laughs> like, you know how at the end of Raw Force, <clears throat> he looked at the camera and winked and it said, To be continued? Yeah. I think we got our continue. So the sequel was going to be... The sequel would have featured American hero Kevin Hall. You think Kevin Hall was a member of the Burbank Karate Club? I think he ends up being a member. <laughs> I, I mean, think he is, starts it. This is certainly a shared universe, right? Yes. I it, mean, I, no question. The, it feels like it. What are the fucking chances that we'd have more jade? Of all the things in the world, jade. They're mining jade. Why do Italians love jade? I don't know. But let me tell you one thing. There's one more joke in this movie that was the worst joke of all time, which is the, what the movie ends on, is while he's flying the helicopter, she says, can't you fly this helicopter in a straight line? And he says, I am. And she says... It's wobbling side to side, and the last line of the movie is Kevin Hall says, it's because it's got Brazilian rhythm. (laughs) Oh, Christ. 
Perfect. Perfect. Oh, also, by the way, he does try to kiss her while they're flying. And, and he, he almost crashes. crashes. And he almost crashes. And she goes like, what are you doing? And then he says something about, we're joining the Mile High Club on this trip, huh? <laughs> no, I mean it. Get down those pants. I would say this movie is better than Raw Force. Okay. Okay. So recommendations. Because I think you said no to Raw Force, Hughes. Yeah. So I say yes to this. So you enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed this movie. I, I also give it a recommend for sure. It's I, I like Raw Force better, of course. But uh, this was so fun. This really was. 100% recommend. Now, I had always remembered this movie as a good cannibal movie. I remember it being good. I haven't seen it in years, but I wrote it down. Before this podcast ever started, I was like, I got to do this movie at some point because I had it on my list of great exploitation movies I'd seen. That one day, the grind bin's going to cover this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you were conceptualizing the grind bin, you're like, and we are going to Dinosaur Valley. And I was like, well, we need to cover more genres, subgenres in the exploitation uh, And we can't genre. not do a cannibal movie. You gotta it's do such a, a part movie. of exploitation cinema. And I hate most cannibal movies. And I was like, well, this is a cannibal movie. And I've told people about this movie. I've recommended it to people. And nobody's ever heard of it. I, I wasn't familiar with it. Uh, and I always remember it being good. So I'm so glad it ended up that you guys enjoyed it. Because when I was watching it, I was like, okay, great, great. I'm, I'm glad I'm glad we're doing it. I think a lot of it has to do with pace. Um, obviously, the story's disjointed. But oh, it's, it's, a, it's but a mess. It just keeps moving. It just, it just keeps going, though. There's no downtime at all. And I appreciate that. It's an absolute mess of a movie. It seems like it was probably originally three hours. And they made him cut it down to 80 minutes, which definitely saved it. Uh, Warnowski was... <laughs> editing this movie just like raw force of course getting into a tight 80 oh i should mention if any uh if any listeners are collectors of tangible media like i am uh 88 films has put out a blu-ray of massacre in dinosaur valley oh and you're about ready to place your order oh yeah that's happening no question now that i've watched it absolutely well i'm so glad you guys enjoyed it you hear that sound though like like an upbeat <laughs> jungle steel drum oh god how do, you, how do you think Bobby and DeVito would, would fit in the world of uh, Dinosaur Valley? I don't think they would do well in, in the jungle, so I'm going to put them at the hotel. Because they hear that if you... Definitely s- at that cockfight. At the cockfight. If you stand up for a woman and lose, she will enter your hotel room and satisfy you. <laughs> yeah, they saw it. They're like, Bobby, did you see what happened with that guy? So all they do is they spend their time in Brazil trying to get into fights defending women. <laughs> To get laid. But here's the thing is like, uh, DeVito says like, okay, Bobby, uh, you go first. So you uh, will hire this guy to go grope on a woman. Then you throw him. And then I'll pretend I'm your brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pretend I'm his brother. And then you, I'll fake beat you up. Uh, I won't fake it though. You got to take a chair shot. <laughs> you got to take one for the team here. But it'll be worth it. <laughs> I like that one. So we never see the final fate of Betty conclusively. <laughs> So I think she goes under the quicksand, a hand comes up before she's finally succumbed to it, and a rope drops down. She grabs that rope and hears, dun, 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 and then she, she gets pulled out of the quicksand puddle, looks up at this yellow van that just saved her life. The doors swing open. There's Bobby and DeVito smiling at her. She turns around, jumps back in the quicksand. <laughs> Because they were they were dressed in the native garb. Yeah, <laughs> they, they've joined Parliament Funkadelic, the jungle g-string, and a headband. <laughs> now you know this movie is multiple movies. Obviously, they're always in some sort of disaster. I feel like in the three-hour cut, this helicopter crashed, and what they landed in was the next part of their adventure, which is we've had the hotel madness with the cockfights, the cannibals, the white slavers. How can it get any worse? <laughs> <laughs> They've landed right in the straight arrow. Yeah, the Brazilian Econoline rally race. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like all you needed was uh, you know you would know immediately from the sound of that horn that uh, something bad was going down. Maybe even in like Gina's place, all of a sudden they hear it. like because you know how in the jungle they hear the monkeys and they're like we're surrounded. <laughs> all of a sudden at the slave camp they hear oh no oh no they're coming again, guys. <laughs> Everybody hide! Uh, so, thank you again for joining us. Does anybody have anything to add? Nothing to plug. No, nothing to plug for me either. This was fun. You can find us at grindhousefilm.com. Rate and review us on iTunes. Twitter, we're at GrindPod. We're on Instagram, Facebook, uh, everything else, yeah. Bobby, shoot the snake.
Oh, oh, oh. Spooky got no, got no, got no, got no real poetry. Hello, Pizza Man.